These two grown men had never seen The Simpsons How the fuck's that even happened The two grown men on a mission now So buckle up and just strap in Should old acquaintance be forgot And never brought to mind These two grown men had never seen The Simpsons It's America's Barley Basket Welcome everyone to another episode of America's Barley Basket. I'm your host Marlon Wells, alongside host Nathan Fulsabach. Hello, Nathan. Hello, Marlon. How are you? I am been rubbed down today. Oh, yeah. I'm like just muscles are mush. Got a 60 minute massage. Nice. Just hanging out over here like a veal calf. <laughs> just <laughs> muscles. Can't distinguish the muscle from the fat. Just well softened. Just been pounded just, into oblivion. You are primo. You are ready for butchering yeah, right now. Yeah, I am. I, I every time I take a get a massage, I realize I'm a gentle boy. Oh, yeah. They they push a little too hard sometimes, mm-hmm. but, you know, daddy don't mind the pain. I'll let her bite down. <laughs> but, boy, oof, they are digging. I'm in the same boat of, like, I am, I'm, a, I'm a delicate boy. I think, I think well, if you're a husky gent, there's just some muscles. You have to push through so much fat to get to the muscle. They're probably, I'm going to pop. I'm going to pop one of these mm-hmm. times. You can't, like a pimple. Yeah, it's a, yep. you just can't push that hard on a mound without it going <laughs> somewhere else. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> tough on me beating me up i'm the same way though i never speak up like uh, i've never had one be so bad to where i had yep, to say something yeah i'm never that a dentist i could see him pulling out like guarding equipment like yeah what do you think of this like oh it's okay <laughs> like, uh, just tell me when it's done uh, like uh, one time i was like is she gonna fucking chicken wing suplex me <laughs> and she said like maneuver me on the table <laughs> it's like, is this her finisher <laughs> the last time i went and got one the lady like i was laying on my back and she like grabbed a wrist and pulled it across my face and was like cranking on oh, the really? shoulder oh. i was like i was like what kind of fucking bob backley yeah. fucking <laughs> submission <laughs> finisher are you working on? Clutch on you get the ref in here Wait for you to tap <laughs> if my other arm drops three times do i lose <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, interesting. I went through that whole that whole uh, massage, and then at the end of it, after I got my britches back on and everything, she's like, okay, so uh, you have some mobility problems. I'm like, yeah, I'm aware. She's like, uh, next, I want you to schedule again for three to, f- three to four weeks from now, but I want you to schedule 90 minutes instead of 60. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. And she goes, and with this other guy, Justin, instead of me, I'm like, oh, we need somebody to really get in there put an saying. iron claw on you yeah get fucking von rauschke getting right Just on the digging top. in yeah. yeah i was like oh so i've graduated past to the email masseuses og 60s bad guy stomach claw on you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a move that needs to come back to wrestling the stomach claw yeah Oh man, yeah. She told me. I think maybe that's the. They always tell you three to four weeks is that I was told to. It's like I'll see you in six months. Yeah, it's like oh, I gotta get in there. Oh. I'm. I've apparently graduated past lady masseuse. Yeah. <laughs> now we gotta get the fellas involved. Yeah. I need someone that can give you a gourd buster if needed. <laughs> <laughs> like to her credit, she was doing all she could. I don't know if she had an apple box she was standing on, but she was fucking throwing bones. This is the first time I've ever been at a got a massage where they have like they got you on a lift that it's like powered oh, yeah, yeah. i've just been throwing you on a card table and get after it, you know like never was I was like what is going look at this look at this this is this fancy things is moving up yeah. but what they don't have this one didn't have some of them have the little oh shit handles by the headrest when you're on your tummy this one i, I had to just let my arms hang because i'm too hmm. wide to let my arms sit at my side they just fall off the table yeah like, I just let them. I just let them fall oh, really? off. Yeah. That's how I, I, so I lay there looking like a fucking dead body yeah, see, yeah. with my arms draped off the sides. See, sometimes they got little oh, oh shit handles by your jaw almost. Okay. So you feel like you're like in a luge, like your Winter Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 anytime you go to a massage place for the first time, you just want to let them, not a creep. I just want to let them know, not a creep. Like, hey, you know, don't need nothing on the upper thighs or the abdomen, nothing even near it. Mm-hmm. So I was on my stomach and just, hey, what if, you know, some calves, maybe some lower 
hamstrings. She lifted the curtain all the way up. I swear. Like, I we felt, don't need this towel. Right? I couldn't believe it. I was like, I almost felt like, oh, that I got, oh, my. <laughs> it's like, my asshole felt wind. It's like, that is, this is getting after it. Uh, that's next She's, after I get these calves. I guess, you know, if you got to put me in a Texas clover leaf, you can't, you can't have that sheet getting in the way. <laughs> like, this is crazy. This guy hasn't exercised in 15 years. <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah. It's good for you though. Get mm-hmm. the get the muscles all loosened up. Get that blood flowing, it's good for you. Yeah, you feel. Turns better. out blood is good for yeah, you. Right it should have just congeal in your ass cheeks and heels <laughs> from sitting all day. <laughs> well, look, the feet are getting bigger. This is normal. I'm going through shoes, just like bursting. A like elephant feet. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Them toes are sure different colors. <laughs> I don't need them all. It's a special day today, Nathan. It sure is. We are talking the Simpsons movie. That's right, baby. Simpsons movie. The summer of 2007 in between seasons 18 and 19, which is where we're at. So we thought, why not do it? Why not have a a little New Year's Eve special? Yeah, And specifically, July 27th. Okay. 2007. Okay. You know what other... Classics were released that same day. I don't. Very, unless I read wrong, very devoid of blockbuster movies. That for, whole summer or just no, that, that week? weekend? Okay. But you know, most summers, there's a banger or two every mm-hmm. big action thing. But maybe the Simpsons movie was thought it was going to be a hit. Maybe that they could be. But God, by 2007, that kind of lost a lot of steam yeah. ratings wise. But the movies released alongside it were Sunshine. The Danny oh, Boyle sci fi. Yep, I really enjoy I that. Like that. It's one of those movies that some people, the ending is not their cup of tea, so it ruins it for them. Yeah. For, I enjoyed it so much up until that point. The ending can get a little get a little pear shaped. I mean, I'm still I'm in it to win it. Right. I, the rest of it was so good. I love that movie. And if man. I'm remembering right, it's boy, it's been a long time since I mm-hmm. saw that movie, but I don't think I disliked the ending of that movie. Yeah. So it wasn't like, oh, I liked it despite of the ending. It was like, no, I liked it. Yeah. I I think I remember thinking I could I don't even remember it. It's I mean I rented that on DVD. It's been mm-hmm. so long ago. Like I remember thinking, ah, I see your point, but no, I was I was engaged. Yeah, I like that. That's a good flick. Very visually stunning mm-hmm. flick. Danny Boyle makes good-looking movies. Like a neat idea for the spaceship. Yeah, yeah like, totally. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the other, there's two others I wrote down. One was I Know Who Killed Me, which was one of the movies that signaled the beginning of the end as Lindsay Lohan as a starring actress. Ah, okay. It was some kind of real gritty kind of supernatural noir i don't know like where she was having flashbacks of her own murder and i think mm-hmm. it was real seedy and violent and okay it's supposed to be un- nearly unwatchable it's so bad <laughs> like you think there was a ton well yeah this is 2007 she had a lot of steam after mean girls i mean sure. like, she was gonna be a movie star yeah like, due to her own poor choices and movies and just being a uncontrollable human being yeah 2007 would have been right in the middle of all of her shit to her tmz yep. big days i had a friend who got to have a bit role in one of her movies called the canyons i believe and uh he is only in one scene but i mean it's a speaking he's got a small speaking role and it was a very indie movie but paul schrader directed it who okay. wrote taxi driver yeah. and directed a, a, a movie i love called affliction and some other good shit he said he asked one of like the not the, not Paul Schrader but one of the other like directors of photography or something mm-hmm. like that because he was like if he asked if Lindsay Lohan wasn't the star in this scene how long would it have take us to finish this he's like maybe three hours and it was like a four day ordeal because she would start crying anytime something wasn't the lighting and she'd run and it would be a two hour beg her to come out of her trailer oh my god right? and, and meanwhile you're just sitting there with your dick in your hand waiting it's like is it, and he said sometimes she'd come back in 15 minutes and they'd have to redo all of her makeup she, and then sometimes yeah. it's like let's just go for dinner you know unbelievable and maybe she'll be back when we come back like wow how like how stressful that must be to be in charge of a sudden. No kidding. And she was the name in that movie. Yeah. So it's like, with her goes the picture. So like, oh my God, yeah. Man, I can't imagine. Imagine imagine just a, just a co-worker at yeah. work. Right? Oh my God. Like, And that co-worker, their job is going to decide if you ever get another job. Right. Like, like how wild that would be. Like, 
your success rides on the shoulders of this mentally unstable 24 year old. Yeah. With a Oof. drinking and drug problem. Yeah. Like, what? Well, Show business. <laughs> Show business, baby. <laughs> right there. And the other movie that got released that I had to know was Who's Your Caddy? Which was Who's Your, you know, it was a. I get it. I don't even know who was in Who's Your Caddy. I'm guessing maybe Mike Epps had something to do with Who's Your Caddy. <laughs> For, it had to be at least one rapper. Sure. It was like, look at these guys from the hood playing golf. Isn't oh, that crazy? God, that's probably exactly I, what it is, yeah, isn't ba- it? I bet you could sum up. Uh, here I am talking about a movie I've never seen. I bet it could be white people golf like this. <laughs> <laughs> Black people golf like this. Really doing a lot for race relations. Oh, man. As soon as I pull it up, the very two, the very first two cast members that come up when you Google it, Big Boy from Outcast. Oh, yeah. It is Big Boy, yeah. And Andy Milanakis. Oh, no shit. Oh, that boy. is awesome. And Jeffrey Jones, the guy who was the principal in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And is, I believe, a pederast. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Terry Crews in there. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, it is, huh. Okay. <laughs> and looking at the reviews for the, I I remember thinking that the Simpsons movie got kind of meh re, like middling reviews. It got 87% on Rotten Tomatoes. Really? Yeah. Okay. And and speaking of things that kind of I was baffled by, it was the eighth most successful movie worldwide that year. Oh, that's not bad. Finishing the top 10, ten at the end of the year. Yeah. Huh. I remember thinking that that it turned out to be like one of those it didn't lose money, but it wasn't that like that's why there was never a sequel, but it turned, they've been talking sequel on and off. Yeah. And I guess the last thing was Matt Groening said, oh, now that Disney has us, there will be a sequel. Oh yeah. I could see that. They will want a sequel. I remember this at the time, like having friends being like, oh, we're going to go see the Simpsons movie and me being like, I've never seen that show. And then being like, what? And then them coming back from it being like, yeah, that was fine. It was yeah. okay. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. I remember I have friends that at that time were still huge Simpson marks. Yeah. And they were all like, I think I, I don't want to give too much away. I think I had a more favorable reaction to it than I remember them having. But also, Likewise, yep. you like you and I, Simpsons isn't our baby. It wasn't right. like something we are we're pulled on to. We're not precious about yep, it. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Like, so, I like the Simpsons. I'm, that, that's why I'm the perfect consumer for Star Wars. I don't need it to be mind blowing because I am not. It's not a part of me, right? Like, you, don't, just, you don't have an emotional yep. sense of authorship mm-hmm. to it. Yeah. I want. I want two hours of blow em ups. Yeah, <laughs> all three of the these last ones. I don't know if they have a name for this group. They were fine. Yeah, I enjoyed them all. I haven't seen any of them. No, shit. I haven't seen any of the new ones. Really? Right. On purpose or just hasn't? Nope. Just it just got away from me. Yep. I just never got around to it. Yep. I I had plans to see. The first of the new ones, episode seven, uh, I had plans to go see it in the theater and those plans got canceled and then I just never thought about it ever again. I totally could have been in the exact same shoes you're in, but I had friends that drug, drug me to them mm-hmm. and like they were kind of disgruntled. Like, oh, that was fun. I like that. And also, I think for me that the prequels left such a sour taste in my mouth that the first one of these, episode seven, yeah. was a breath of fresh air. Like, sure. okay. This was true. I never even saw the third prequel, which I've been told is the best. I would back that. Yep. The second one was just so like. Boy, that second one's awful. Bad. Like, this is a bad, is bad. A legit bad movie, and it's yep. long. I don't I don't want to see this anymore. And one is a story of highs and lows yep. for me. The Phantom then, Menace. I, yep. I think the Phantom Menace is better than people give it credit for, but I won't stand by it as you some know, great fucking movie. You and I pay for the Disney Plus, for The Simpsons. All those movies are on there. I should watch the prequels again. I should watch the new ones. And I would say, of the new movies, this I don't know if this is a hot take or not, or maybe this is something a lot of people agree with. One of those standalone Star Wars movies called Rogue One. Yeah. I thought that was super good. Rogue One is my favorite thing that says Star Wars on it. Yeah, man. I, yeah. I, it's the best movie. It's as much as I love The Mandalorian, it's better than that. It's like Rogue One is legit my favorite piece of Star yeah. Wars. See, if I, I couldn't go that far, but how much of my thoughts on the original Star Wars is tinged with nostalgia? Sure. Yeah. Because I, as a little kid, again, it wasn't my favorite thing, but I enjoyed Star Wars, you know? Like, yeah. yeah. And when I was little, little, 
little. They show those fuckers on USA on a Saturday afternoon. Think of that. Like, yeah. That was the Star Wars wasn't the monolith it is now, that they would just have an afternoon of the Star Wars movies. See, when I was little, we never had it. Like, Star Wars was never in our home, but like a, fam- uh, a, a, a family who was a friend of our family, they had those on VHS. And I remember going to their house, go to the Zinker's house yeah. every so often and be like, we should watch Star Wars. Yeah. Like we got to watch it one time. So then little Marlin, that's all he wanted to do anytime <laughs> he went there, like insisted on sitting down those kids yeah. and then making them watch Star Wars like for the 5,000th time. Like the Ghostbusters had a, f- I watched Ghostbusters 10 times more than I watched any Star Wars movie combined. Mm-hmm. Just cause I, I, it might, that's what tickled my imagination. Yeah. You know, like like the Star Wars got right. Just what you're saying too. Seven-year-olds can watch Star Wars, Mm -hmm. and a 47-year-old can watch Star Wars and not feel like it's a kid's movie. Exactly. They got that part figured out. Man, like, they made it perfect for all ages. Yeah. Star Wars is great. I don't have any issue with Star Wars. I should watch those new ones. And the thing that ruined me, because like we've discussed before, my mom apparently didn't realize that they were showing fully unrated movies on, on HBO, and I was six years old watching Aliens, and it's fucking, you know, like, <laughs> fucking, it's Vasquez unloading a goddamn clip and her smart gun, and <laughs> she's fucking crushing xenomorphs, you know, the rolling in canisters of C and 20, game over, man, like, so that just like, oh, fuck, that's what a movie should be, I don't, I can't have Ewoks, I need chest bursters, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> God, aliens go. I, I, every time a good movie pops up on Amazon Prime, I'm like I need to watch that. I, I get it all set up. I'm ready to go. I got a beverage, and then I see that they're still showing aliens. Fuck it, we're watching aliens. Again. <laughs> God, that movie fucking it just it it fucking when it when it, the first sighting of a fucking alien, it goes so hard for the next hour and mm-hmm. a half. It's just like, and it's just them getting their asses kicked pretty much. <laughs> like, just them getting fucking ripped to shreds. Like I like aliens, but my movie f- for th- like the way you feel about aliens is how I feel about Silence of the Lambs. That's my have to sit down and watch it once yeah, a month like, new, I'm, like kind of movie i'm kind of there though too if i'm at my parents house because they still got cable mm-hmm. if, if uh, we've discussed this science of the lambs maybe more than any movie maybe besides like jody foster's hair if someone told you that movie came out in 2008 you'd buy it like, yeah it just doesn't look it doesn't look it's timeless it's so yeah. weird that way that like, movie's fucking good because you know like buffalo bill didn't look like he just looks like a weirdo like Mm -hmm. people didn't look like that in 1989 or 90 or whenever that movie came out like everything is i don't know something i mean it's fucking pitch perfect god that movie hits everything fucking right yeah that movie's outstanding if you like those type of movies and you tell me you don't like silence of the lambs I'm going to think a lot worse of you. Like, what's wrong with <laughs> what's Are you trying that? to be what's cute? Your deal? You, yeah. like, you can't like good things. Uh, is it things? too cool? You too cool yep. for that? Yeah. Like, yeah. You, but you, like, I mean, I don't like violent movies. I don't like movies with killing. Sure. Mm-hmm. That make, but like, if you like shit, like you like true crimey type movies, but you don't like that, nah. That movie's You're wrong. wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> like, sorry, bro. You're wrong. Like, I think my only other movie that I that even comes close is the Blues Brothers. I will go ooh. out of my way to watch the Blues Brothers. Yeah. The Blues Brothers is so joyous. Yeah. Like I will fucking sit with a big smile like an idiot and watch Blues Brothers. There's a chance. Uh, it's so hard to quantify because there's so so many movies over so many decades. Blues Brothers might be my favorite comedy. Mm ever made it's up there for me yeah. it's my favorite 80s comedy everyone has one 80s comedy that most that they latch on to for a lot of people my age it's back to the future or ghostbusters yeah. for me it's the blues brothers like and then like movies like, and then like some movies it's like ghostbusters is a good story like mm-hmm. it's a it's a, it's kind of almost an action movie you know yeah they're go- fighting a giant goddamn monster at the end and shit like for laugh, me, but there's movies that make me laugh more than the Blues Brothers too. Mm-hmm. I laugh way more at Borat than I do at Blues Brothers. Sure, but God damn, just the feel of blue, blue again. What year did that come out? It's hard to fucking 1980. tell. Nineteen eighty. Look how they're dressed. It know? has like a the, vibe. Yeah, Blues like, Brothers has a vibe. Yeah, like, and it's a joyful one. Like, yeah. like I said, I will just smile 
the whole like, time watching the Blues Brothers. I think I like it with the Blues Brothers. It doesn't try to be cool at all. Mm-mm. They're they're loving a music that could not be farther away from pop culture in 1980. Yeah. Disco just got done. Now it's new wave. And they're fucking talking about fucking, you know, like Lightning Hopkins and yeah, shit. Like old know? Chicago like, blues. Yeah, really? like not even the cool Delta. Right. Yeah, like, God, that, yeah. And just never breaking character at all. It's so, yeah. Fuck, that movie is so good. Yeah. That's a, man. If you tell me you don't like Blues Brothers, <laughs> like you like Caddyshack, but you don't like Blues Brothers, like oh man, I don't know. Fucking and even then, like I could see, like I don't really care for the music, or you yeah. know, like there's a couple things I could I could allow, but man, Blues Brothers is a joyful fucking film. God, so much. Yeah, like every scene is. Like, it's like, I'm trying to think of a part I don't enjoy. Right, like. I am not a, some of those musical numbers for me, it's like, well, I can, that's the time to go take a quick piss, but they <laughs> play such an important part of it, you know? Right. Like, yeah. Man, I did like, if I hear the opening notes to everybody needs somebody to love, yeah. I'm fucking, I'm, uh, you're like, I'll fucking, I'll dance in my living room like crazy person. Yeah. <laughs> your, your children, how much for you? How much for the little girl? How much for the little girl? <laughs> we can't just talk about Blues Brothers. All right. Oh, we could though. <laughs> God, we could. So what are you going to talk about? The Simpsons? Oh, uh, yeah. But that was all I had for like intro notes, so. Shall we get into the movie, Marlon? Why not? 2007's The Simpsons yeah. movie. Uh, uh, starts with a... I I mean, I enjoy Itchy and Scratchy because it's such a part of the show. Yeah. This the starts off with maybe like a five? Maybe it's longer than... Not that long, but... Maybe same, not five, but it's a long one. Yeah, and enjoyable. I have to put the brakes on this. It starts with Ralphie Wiggum, the way this ought to start. In the 20th Century Fox logo, what doing I miss? the when they're doing the you know 20th Century Fox, he's in the zero of the 20th Century Fox with his finger in his nose, going da 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 da. You missed that, yeah. huh. man? I goofed. I note number one: movie starts strong. <laughs> Ralphie Wiggum. <laughs> Thankfully, we get a lot of Ralphie in the movie as we go. We do a fair that. amount, yes. But this itchy and scratchy bit that you're into, yeah. was also pretty solid. I think it's him on the, it's the cat on the moon, yeah, and like it's pretty involved. And the mouse, of course, murders the cat on the moon, and he comes back, and because of his celebrity of being a moon fucking man, like that's not the term they use, astronaut, yeah, moon fucking man, <laughs> yeah, he becomes president, yeah, and he turns out that the cat's not dead, <laughs> so he he launches. There's a great scene of like a dial. It's like retaliation. It's something that's like accident. He just turns it on accident and just dumps a million fucking nukes into the yep. moon, which the cat swallows them all. They somehow. all go in the cat's yeah. mouth. Yeah. yeah. So it's very involved. And then it's a, yeah, it was a good blend. And all of a sudden, Homer stands up. It turns out they're in the movie theater. Yep. And he's just flummoxed. Like, why would anyone pay to see a movie of a TV show? You could just stay home and watch the TV show. I liked this. And then we cut into the big simpsons intro which i liked a part of me was like maybe it would have been cool to just do the og like tried and true but i don't know i thought the same thing but that was a pretty immediately squashed by like nah do something special why yeah. not uh they have the music and they're going through different you know like we get the chalkboard gag like we yeah. do we do a couple we touch on a couple of the classics but for the most part the intro is pretty redone and then it ends with uh Green Day performing the theme song out on the barge in, yeah. in Lake Springfield. Yeah, the whole, pretty much the whole community's there. 2007 peak American Idiot Green Day. Which that's a Green Day I never got into at oh, all. Oh, really? Yep. I like that Green Day. Really? Interesting. Yeah, that was, I mean, I was, you know, 2007, I'm 22. Like, I was, I was into that Green Day. I was. I you know grew up so sheltered. I missed out on Big Dookie Green Day. I mean, I got into it later. The sure, Dookie fucking sold like ten million copies. Oh yeah, I was an insomniac Green Day. Okay, yeah, like when they like the kind of their try hard album because they've gotten so much shit for being kind of like bubblegum pop yeah. or punk. So like, hey, fuck it, we're gonna go hard. And like Geek Stink Breath when that that was That's their debut single. Fuck, that was good. I came in on Green Day at Warning is where oh. I came from, which is not a starting point that most people yeah, came in but, on. I think I might have got warning. Is that the one? Does that have Hitch It or Ride on it? 
Or is that? I don't believe so. I think Hitch and Ride is earlier. Prior. I think the only hit on Warning is Warning. Warning yep. And uh, Minority, was that like, oh, Yes, I'm Minority. Yep, that's right. the other yep. one. You're right. Or my brother owning that. He's about your age. So yeah. Checks out. Minority's a good song. So yeah. is Warning. Yeah. Warning's a good song. Damn right. Yeah, yeah. I like both of those. But you're right. If you would have said after Warning, which is pretty tepid for success wise, yeah. oh, they're going to put out their biggest album ever in a few years. Like, no, they're not. This is the <laughs> nat. They blew up like a fucking Roman candle. And then they fucking, a little bit of a dip with Insomniac. And then they kind of bounced back with the next album because it had that acoustic played at every Time wedding. Time of your life. Time of your life. Good riddance. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Which has a song called Hitchin' a Riot on it that I love. Hitchin' a Riot's a good song. Yep. And then, well, okay, they're just dipping down. Oh, be like a lot of '90s bands, they're just looking to have their, they'll have the core fans, and they'll just become a classic rock act. But fuck, yeah, to their credit, fuck, they blew up huge. Yeah. Like, American Idiot is a good album. It ended up being like pretty overplayed in rock radio, especially "Wake Me Up with September Ends" and "American Idiot." Both. God, that's wild that i was even at that time. I was so out of the loop with pop culture. <laughs> I <laughs> had no idea. I, I bet I haven't heard one of those songs more than five times in my life. Really? Yeah. Man, American Idiot's a good song. Really? Yeah. I like yeah, it. Yeah. Maybe I just dismissed it all. Like, they just, they, I don't know. I always felt like they were really still trying real hard, which, why is it, why is it wrong to try? Why is that? Yeah. That's, why is that? That's a a tall, why can't they be like a good 90s rock band and succumb to the heroin addiction? <laughs> 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 that's probably why I was bitter. All of my favorite bands from that era were dying. Yeah. You know? Why aren't you guys in rehab? Yeah, or, why don't you get your arms cut off? Fading into <laughs> obscurity. Because <laughs> your veins are collapsing because you're showing off. <laughs> I do get what you mean, though. Like, you can't. It's it's tough to describe, but tryhardism is a real thing. Like yep. you can tell when someone is trying too yeah. hard. So I get what you mean. And some bands do do that. Oh it's yeah, cringy. Yep. fucking Metallica's entire Death Magnetic album is yeah. tryhard. Yeah. We're going back to basics. Yeah, you know, like, it's like no assholes. You clearly just wrote fourteen songs and spliced them together into seven songs because hey, our <laughs> songs used to be eight minutes yeah. long. I never. That's what that kind of has that feel. Death Magnetic is that way all the really? way. Really? No Death, shit. Death Magnetic feels so disingenuous. Like, this isn't... You guys are trying so hard to rewrite Injustice for All again, and you can't. I haven't listened to a new Metallica record since... Uh, what was the one about Circa 2003? Garage Inc.? No, with... Uh, St. Anger. St. Anger. Oh, I, well, that's but, a bad one to leave off on. I, we used to... We were really... We were heavily drinking in this period in our life. This is the period of my life where I lived the, most people's nightmare of thinking school hadn't started, but it started two weeks later. Oh, boy. <laughs> and it was around that time I was drinking at my buddies, Kyle and Craig, if they happen to listen. And uh, he, one of them went and bought St. Anger at Best Buy back when you could still buy music at music stores. And we listened to it beginning to end because we thought metallica deserved that and it's like guys i didn't fucking like that no it's fucking it's, it's bad like, well, did that seem really bad like sad mm -hmm. sad bad i mean i don't think reloads great shakes but it's not like depressingly bad right you know what i mean like that's oh that's that's 90s metallica yeah. you know like because that would have been the most after reload there's a kind of a gap and then it would have been St. Anger. Yeah. Because Garage Inc.'s not technically a studio yeah, album. Yeah, it's not technically an album because it's Which, a covers album. But, but man, fucking St. Anger, or uh, what's Garage Inc. with, that's got some fucking good fucking Oh, yeah. Stone Cold Crazy yep. is rad. That's a Queen song, and yeah. they kill it. That acoustic uh, Leonard Skinner song, Tuesday's Gone. No. Like, that's just a good song. Yeah. So, but I mean, they, they do a hell of a job. And fucking Turn the Page, which is a song I like anyhow. I don't like Turn the that Page. came but up before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it came up on mic, but yeah, yeah I'm not a Seeger guy. Yeah. And and also, it's a song I like when the original artist sings it. I love, uh, oh, the Thin Lizzy cover they do. I think it was even a single, too. Uh, what was the single? I know there's a video that Metallica made. I don't even know if they're in it. It's a bunch of girls like having a house party and just raising hell. I'm trying to think uh, of Thin Lizzy singles, and yeah. I'm coming up with God. Jailbreak, and that's about it. Yeah. And Boys Are Whiskey Back in, in the town. Jar. Oh, yeah, Whiskey yep. in the Jar. There yep. you go. Yep. I forget yep. that that's on that record. Yeah, that's a catchy fucking song. Yeah, Whiskey it, in the Jar is a good song. It's like maybe their covers weren't like otherworldly. They just chose fun songs to cover. Yeah, that's half the fucking the good battle. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. 
Uh, so Green Day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, these, we we got a ninety minute movie. <laughs> this, gonna, I guarantee you, this podcast will be longer than the movie. Yeah, for oh sure. goodness, yeah. Uh, so Green Day is playing the song on a on a barge out in Lake Springfield. I like that they have the teleprompter with the lyrics, which is just da 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 da. da. I like that uh, Mrs. Krabappel is on Principal Skinner's shoulders and she rips her like her blouse open and she's got a T-shirt underneath that says "Not my boyfriend" with, pointing down with some banging titties. <laughs> Those are movie titties. She, we can't have her having titties like that in the TV show. I, Those are too hot for TV titties. <laughs> Off for TV titties. <laughs> God, I, I think it's a, you're a fucking sad man if you have a goddamn fucking anime goddamn fucking body pillow. But man, if they made a Krabappel one, <laughs> God, I would. I'd maybe risk it all. <laughs> risk it all for a Krabappel body pillow. <laughs> Oh, God. We appreciate Mrs. Krabappel. Yeah. It's not just sexuality. No, every part of Oh, man, it's so many pieces to that fucking beautiful puzzle. Yeah. You'll find your Mrs. Krabappel oh, someday, man. Nathan. I need to start hanging out with jaded middle school teachers. Absolutely. Yeah. I bet oh. they know how to party. Right? Oh, man. The saddest, most depressing partying, too. Which nope. I'm about. I bet it's fun. I, I bet it's so, a good yeah. time party. Yeah, I bet it's the kind of party that when you do sober up, you look around and say, ooh, no one's smiling. <laughs> no one's smiling at this point. Point. I yeah. imagine maybe it's just a real hard drinking party. It'd be like party might be too strong a word. I think I think jaded middle school teachers just drink together yeah. and drink yeah. hard. Get too drunk at five forty five p.m. at a fucking Chili's because there's fucking two for one fucking apple teenies. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Either a Chili's or just a fucking super dive bar. Yeah, I could see either way. Trays of shots at five oh five p.m. Oh, 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 yeah, that are like weirdly warm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they yep. put them on top of the pizza cooker while they're like, <laughs> this <By> person's quest. <laughs> This person's not good at their job. Oh my god! I, there was a buddy of mine one time. We were uh, we were out drinking. This is during my strip club days, and we're out just having a few drinks, nothing wild, but got a shot and a beer in front of us, and we're drinking. We're shooting uh, sambuca, that's black sambuca out of the cooler. It's always kept in the cooler, so it's super cold. And uh, we we're about to do it, and my buddy's like, "I gotta hit the bathroom," and he went and like came back out and got distracted got caught up talking to somebody for a while and i'm just sitting there like god damn it and the bartender buddy of ours was like well if he wants it warm it's gonna be real warm and he took that that shot and put it in the microwave for a while oh (laughs) brought it back out and set it down just as my buddy was getting back and grabbed it quick and cheers a clink and down the hatch and he spit Spit oh, black sambuca God. like the great Muda. Spit it across <laughs> the fucking bar. What color mist? Drenched him in black. <laughs> oh, the, oh, the dangerous yeah, mist. Yeah, the bad <laughs> Muda. So drink it cold. Drink it cold, especially if you're if your buddy's the bartender. Oh, That's uh, the lesson there. Little, <laughs> public service announcement. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the pollution in the lake uh, eats the stage to such a degree that Green Day and the stage sink like the Titanic, which is fun. They play they play violins on the yeah. way down. It's been a pleasure playing with you. Yeah. yeah, it's good fun. After there is one visual gag, like because the because the Green Day finishes singing the theme song, and then they're like, we want to take just a minute to talk about the environment, and the crowd starts throwing trash yeah, at them. And do a 180 like, immediately. <laughs> Boom! That, that one bit where somebody throw, I think maybe it's Mo throws a beer bottle, and it goes through the the kick drum in front and yeah. hits the drummer in the balls. Yeah. I thought that was funny. Yeah. Uh, we cut, uh, we're, we're in church the next morning and, uh, we're having Lovejoy is given, uh, given his sermon and we get the Simpsons showing up late to church, which is fun. Everyone in the church, like hears them outside and they go quiet. Yeah. So you got the Simpsons outside being like, I can't believe we're late for church again. And, and Homer being like, whatever, those pious assholes, they don't, they won't yeah. even notice. And they walk in, everyone's looking at them. Were you guys a late for church family? I don't know that we've ever been late for church. No, we were never that way. Well, one thing, we were usually there because of Sunday school, so. Oh, sure. Yeah. And no, we were rarely that family. Yeah, I don't think so either. No. I don't want to be. I, I Church, get there early, get a good pew, spread out. Yeah, we, uh, I don't know. 
we, we I feel like we were never late to most things. Even today, I'm not late to most. Yeah, you things. are a prompt man. I am. I'm usually early. Yep. If you're not early, you're late. Yep. <laughs> which I, I don't actually adhere to, yep. but uh, I do that know people. Cell who say phones that. have ruined me. Like. It's like, I'm going to be late, but if you're late, I don't give a fuck. I will just look. I'll read about fantasy football for two and a half hours. <laughs> oh, man, I'm sorry. I fucking in June. Yeah. <laughs> What's going to happen in seven months? <laughs> Got to be on top of things. Uh, I made the conference uh, semifinal, or I made the semifinals of my fantasy football Oh, league, look at so, you. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. How much money's on the line? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe first place gets 400 bucks. That's a oh, decent one. That's solid. Yeah, that's yeah. a real good one. And I will buy something stupid with it. I always promise anyone in my leagues that if I win... That you'll waste uh, it? Yep, because the last time I took second place, I bought a ornate Kiss uh, Destroyer album cover shower curtain. Nice. And if I would have won the whole league, I would have got the toilet tank cover and the toilet mat. Nice. So it's like, it's your guys' loss that I didn't win. Like, <laughs> see the coolest bathroom known to man. I'm, I'm, I'm a believer in cool bathroom stuff in particular yeah. shower curtains god yeah i'm the way it's going i just anything that keeps the centipedes away <laughs> that's where i'm at with my bathroom just, anything that keeps the centipedes from <laughs> disrupting your shower <laughs> yeah. rattling the door <laughs> this is where they breed <laughs> <laughs> oh what a life yeah oh, we're really doing it uh so the simpsons come in they sit down church continues uh and Reverend Lovejoy is calling for somebody like somebody out there has to have the spirit hit him. Certainly somebody. And the light comes through the window and shine, not, uh, not unlike the Blues Brothers. Yep. The light comes in the window and shines down on Abe Simpson, who uh, who has he's full of the spirit and starts doom crying immediately yeah. about how they're all doomed and everything's bad. And and uh, heed my words. Uh, in particular, he mentions a twisted tale, a thousand eyes, trapped forever, and something Epa. Epa. He, he keeps Epa. screaming Epa. Uh, so that wraps up. They roll him up in a carpet. That was such a good visual gig. <laughs> him riding home wrapped in that carpet. And then they stop for waffles, but leave him in the car. And yeah. he's wrapped up in that carpet sitting in the <laughs> middle in the front seat. And he's like, Hey, I'm still in the car. And Homer comes back. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. And rolls the window down a crack as if he were a dog. Yeah, That was, that was fun. Uh, then we get Homer doing chores. He's uh, supposed to fix a sinkhole. He just parks the sandbox over it and then <laughs> stuffs Maggie in it yeah. in order to plug the sinkhole. Sinkhole is <laughs> a big issue where you come from. Uh, I don't know that I've ever come across a sinkhole in no. all my days. I th oh, no. We have them. Well, like the couple times they collapsed roads. I mean, it would. It, there was one time in particular when I was a teenager, I worked for the city crew. There was, imagine it's like a two-lane country road, sure. but close enough that it was legally in city limits it was the whole uh the entire length of the road a perfect circle so if you drove a car in it just would have been like in a movie just like right down in it like jesus i don't know 15 feet deep like in the blues brothers yeah oh yeah 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 <laughs> like it was yeah nuts and thankfully someone like someone drove over it felt it collapse which that's a, gotta be a fun feeling and they immediately called and it's like holy fuck this is gonna be a chore huh because where do you begin you know like oftentimes what it is, it's an underground water line that might go bad and just waters it's leaking yeah and that leak wears it out or other times it's groundwater just going through huh. i like, wonder that, why we don't have sinkholes right is it because there's no water where probably I come from? okay my guess yeah yeah come from where it doesn't rain yeah and then you know you'd only get the underground water ones would be like in a city or a town you sure know? yeah so you get out in the country yeah i don't think it's i don't know the closest we have is sometimes you know you get the frost bump when the ground well jesus this is a conversation <laughs> the groundwater freezes you get those bumps maybe then in the in the spring when it settles if you get a wet spring then they'll fucking the road will be almost collapsed in spots Jesus, yeah, but you know what? I'm loving this construction yep. maintenance talk. Yep, this is. I come from a long line of people that do road building and maintenance. Yep, <laughs> I don't have many areas of expertise, and I'm not even an expert. At least I know a little something. You and know? hey, Nathan, even yeah. if even if our listeners didn't find that entertaining, at least now they know. Mm -hmm. They know mm -hmm. what to look out for. Ever vigilant for sinkholes. Yep, that's you. Keep let them keep you up at night. <laughs> if you ain't thinking about them, they're thinking about you. 
Uh, Homer also needs to reshingle the house. We get a, a gag that I like almost winced at when he's up on the <laughs> roof with Bart and he's like gonna hammer the nail in, oh. and you expect him to hit the hit his thumb yeah. because that's the obvious yeah. joke that you see coming. But he winds up the hammer too hard and sticks the claw oh, hammer in so his gross. eye. Yeah. Jesus, not good. Uh, and then it just it turns into him and Bart just dicking around on the roof, like yeah. like oh I dare you to climb the antenna and <laughs> and and like Bart almost falls off the roof and Flanders is like oh the, you gotta be careful up there guys and they're both like yeah fuck you Flanders yeah, yeah. and Bart's hanging from the gutter as Homer's about to hit his fingers yeah. with the claw hammer. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Them yeah. fucking around up on the roof. And the other storyline we have going at this time is Lisa has a found a new love interest named Colin. Colin of he's a European boy, European a Irish lad. boy. Oh, yep, a little more I don't know socially conscious. She cares about the environment. He's mm-hmm. an, an artiste types, yep. of course. Lisa's just all you know. I don't know what the word would be, but she's there's a like she's like be cool, be cool. You like this boy, be cool. And she just isn't. She's like letting out like loud horse laughs oh, and God, stuff. Oh God, I know? love how like, uncool Lisa yeah. is and, around and, and Colin. And I like that she rolls with. Him. She just collapses and she's still laughing. You yeah. Know? And Colin, for to his credit. He's, he's a swoony boy. Yeah, he's a nice boy. Yeah. Good, good for Lisa. Good for Colin. Yeah, good for Lisa. And Move past her uh, her Corys. And we, yeah, right. Yeah, those goddamn Corys. They don't want to love. <laughs> uh, I think uh, this is a this is probably the C storyline at most times. It's always just kind of there. We don't really get a lot of big drawn out scenes with Lisa and Colin. Maybe right. one towards the end, but it's but, always there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then we'll uh, cut back to Homer and Bart, their, uh, their, their dare war. We can like, I don't even know what the dare was, but Homer is walking in circles in the yards with like a pallet of bricks <laughs> on his back as Bart just casually shoots him again and again with a pellet gun. It's like, what c- could that have been? Like, what led to that? No you know, idea, like, but that's funny. Yeah. So then f- after that's finally over, uh, I mean, ho- finally over for Homer's sake, he gets to make a dare, and it's for Bart to ride skateboard naked. Where does he have to go again? To Krusty Burger and back. Krusty Burger and back. We also hear while Homer's carrying that brick around, get that fox joke that it comes scrolling across the bottom oh. of the screen like, this Wednesday at 8, catch this such and such show. That's right. We even advertise our show during the movie. Yep. I thought that was a fun, yep. a fun little gag. Yeah. So we get Bart now has to skateboard through Springfield naked, which big visual scene because it's a huge scene. You know, like a lot of a lot of sight gags, like because it's always him almost being naked, but something's always being held up. It's in like front the of Austin him. Powers yep. bit, yeah, yep. and it's really involved and a lot of moving parts in it. Ex- except at one point. They just show it. You just see Bart's horn. I don't <laughs> need to see little baby Bart horn. That was funny, though, because it's like the whole time you're like, I get it. There's always something right in front of his uh, in front of his junk. And then he skates behind that row of shrubs where everything is shrubs except, except for, groin for his groin. Yeah. Oh, I thought yeah. that was funny. I also had a, a bit of a chuckle because this isn't how it works. But when he skates past Ralphie, Ralphie looks and then looks kind of dead in the camera and goes i like men now yeah yeah <laughs> what <laughs> and it's all fun and games till bart ends up eating shit he bounces across the week we get hans Molman driving truck again yeah hans Molman is retirement age he don't need to be on the road anymore <laughs> hans Molman's got white line fever he just can't quit mm-hmm. <laughs> he's just, yep, he, he can't quit he's it. hooked to it's the road yep. <laughs> so uh bart has a crash he, he hits the window of crusty burger as the as the uh flanderses are eating their dinner you know yeah. like <laughs> and you get that shot i've seen that shot before of of flanders holding up a big crinkle fry while bart's plastered on the yeah. glass and he's yeah. holding it over his over his dick yep and uh wiggum shows up they gotta like de spatula him from the window <laughs> and i like to it's like oh uh well, at lunchtime, boys. So they just naked. They handcuff Bart to a light pole, naked. Like it's like, hey guys, what are you gonna do? It's like, hey, don't worry, it's lunchtime. But we got someone that'll keep you preoccupied, and it's Nelson. Yeah, just going ha ha over and over again. At, That's a at, funny bit at Bart's nude form. I like that it transitions to evening time, and he's still ha ha but tired. he's like horse. Yeah, <laughs> he can barely get it out anymore. <laughs> 
Uh, so they uh, they finally get Homer over there to help to you know take Bart, and this is where we get the. Uh, uh, this is the worst day of my life meme. Yep. That's like, the well, worst this is the worst day of your, your life, life so far. far. Like, yep. I, I wrote that down. Ah, yeah. that's where that meme came from. So, and, and oh, they're filming a commercial at Krusty Burger. That's how they get the pig. I yep. think the pig's one of the most well-known aspect of the movie. It's the only thing I remember from the trailer. Yeah. Having never seen the movie, I do remember that from the trailer. And there are some great sight gags, and just good gags overall with the pig. Because I think the pig is in a commercial for Krusty Burger, and then the commercial's done, so they're about to kill the pig, and Homer's like, don't do that. Like, we're bringing this pig you home. Can't wear, you can't kill him when he's wearing people clothes? Yeah, that's like, that's a rule? Yeah. <laughs> so they got the pig, and Homer just loves the pig. This is also in the Krusty Burger there, where we plant the seeds of a major storyline of Bart being pissed at Homer and Ned being there to pick up the slacks because oh, Ned call. gives yep. him spare pants. Yeah, that, and, you're right. Yep, and, yep. and Bart's mad at Homer because he throws him under the bus. William yeah. gives him the opportunity to be like, "If take, you dared the boy, then you would take the fall for it." Yeah. And Homer, of course, doesn't. Yeah. Uh, and Homer is just head over heels with this pig. That scene where he's in the in Bart's bed combing its hair in different ways mm-hmm. is so good. Like, and the pig is just like wide eyed and terrified of everything. Yeah, like, yeah. the pig is just, is solid gold comedically. And he's fawning over the pig, which makes Bart even more mad. And that's also where we get Ned because I mean, Ned sees Bart in the in the tree mm-hmm. watching Homer and the pig, and he tries to kind of like, hey, Bart, you know, just kind of. Try to get him to soften up a little bit, you know? Like, yeah. Because like, he leaves on hot hot cocoa. It's so, like, an, I love like how elaborate yeah, the hot like cocoa shaved is. whatever it is, you shaved know? Shaved chocolate yeah. and a graham crack. He sticks a fucking marshmallow on top and then uses Torches a hand it. torch yeah. to toast it. <laughs> and Bart's like, no, nah, I'm not. I don't drink hot cocoa. I'm not a sissy. And then when, when Flanders leaves, he scurries over like a raccoon. Mm-hmm. And then he runs up into the yard and takes like one sip. He's like, oh, God, like how good it is. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, you, you a hot cocoa man? I'll drink a hot cocoa. I bet I've had five or fewer hot cocos as an adult, which is good, though. Just, yeah. Every time I have one, I'm like, yeah, that's good. It's just, I'm never in position to where hot cocoa is a thing. Well, the like... The only time I'm around where you could get a hot cocoa if you wanted to is at a coffee shop, and odds are I'm getting coffee. Yep. I'm there for coffee. Exactly. You know, oh, so yep. uh, shout out to my buddy Dave who sent me an eight pack of Run the Jewels coffee cans oh, that really? are delicious. Oh, no kidding. Real good. All like eight cans, you mean eight different types of coffee or just eight, eight of, of the same uh, thing? Uh, yeah. Okay. So Bart is warming up to Ned. Uh, Lisa is fighting the good fight against pollution. And the city, of course, does not care because that's that's Springfield. They they don't give a fuck. Yep. And and sweet baby Colin is all about helping because, of course, he is. Because that's he's an adorable boy. He's a very adorable boy. Also, the Irish accent is a powerful thing. Yes, it is. I don't know about anybody else. I, I won't try to speak for anyone else. But boy, the Irish accent really floats someone's boat over here. I think so. Oh. Uh, shout out to our Irish listeners. Colin, Colin Farrell, man. <laughs> I <laughs> love Colin Farrell. <laughs> Colin Farrell ought to be in more things. Yep, he, he's a good actor. He's very good. Like, at some point, he got written up as just being like like a, t- a, f- a handsome, not talented guy, which is far from the truth. Colin right. Farrell's fucking solid goal. He's I've a hell seen of an Daredevil. Actor. Colin Farrell's amazing. I've never seen Daredevil. Yeah? No. Nope. Colin Farrell's in it. You should watch really? it. Is yeah. he Bullseye. Oh, I was going to say, who would be the villain he would play? Okay, yep. I would put Colin Farrell's Bullseye in the top five Marvel movie villains. No shit, yep. really? I think he's great. I think he's so perfect in that movie. And Just the right level of unhinged. And tell me if I'm wrong here. Uh, when Marge finds out about the pig... Isn't there something about the pig that makes Marge believe the the Grandpa Simpson prophecy even more? Yeah, she freaks. Curly tail, curly twisted tail. tail. Twisted yep. tail, uh, that's what it is. Because yep. she's kind of sitting obsessing about this the yep. whole time. And then, yeah, Homer brings home that pig, and she's like, nope, this you got to get rid of this. This then, is part of whatever happened to Grandpa. Yeah. And then Marge, like she always does, she gives in, and Homer has the pig, and he's doing all sorts of pig antics. And finally, she's like, where are you, where are you putting his droppings? And he has like a goddamn 
homemade silo of pig shit in their back. I would say Oof. 12 feet tall, probably. Yeah, probably. 12 feet tall, 5 feet diameter. God, a lot of pig shit. <laughs> That's all a like lot of pig, pig shit. shit. So, <laughs> so yeah, he's been, it's like not well seen. It's not, stru- the structural integrity is lacking, so it's leaking. And Marge is, oh, man. Yeah, the pig. The pig was some of the funniest parts of this movie. I liked. I also remember that from the trailer. I liked the spider pig bit when yeah. he's got the pig up on the ceiling yeah. and Marge is just blankly staring yeah. at yeah. this. <laughs> I I got a good laugh at that, even though, like I said, one of the only things I remember from yep. the trailer. So Marge has finally had enough of the overflowing pig excrement, which I think. We're not, she's not asking too much. You know what? Fair. Yep. It's like, get rid of the goddamn pig shit silo. (laughs) And, (laughs) and now Lisa's won the city over. So there's no more dumping in the, in Lake Springfield. Mm -hmm. So they got some cement barricades up and, uh, she tells Homer where to bring it. He pouts and maybe it's just like the city dump or something like that. Yeah. There's, there's an actual waste place to take it and he's sitting in line and he's going to do it. He has it strapped to the, the, the goddamn fucking. The frame of that station wagon must be pretty solid because it's carrying <laughs> a lot of pig waste. And he's going there, but then he gets a call from Lenny that Lard Lad Donuts has had some kind of donut mishap. So they have all They're these donuts. giving away donuts. Oh, there's yeah. a great gag where, where Wiggum's got like three donuts on the barrel of his service revolver. And he goes to bite one and he shoots and it goes through the bill of his yep. hand. He's like, oh, that was a close one. Yeah. And he immediately goes, goes back into right the back uh, to it. God damn it. God, catch it. Yeah, like shooting through the bill of a hat you're wearing. Like, You'd fe- you'd feel that, you know. Oh. Like, yeah. I had a donut recently, and I thought about you and I's uh, donut conversations we've had about your uh, love of a basic bitch, uh, maple long john. Mm-hmm. I I had a maple cake donut, like uh, a, just a regular uh, donut with maple frosting. Worth a shit. Yeah, it was fine. It was okay. a fucking gas station donut. Okay. The ceiling is pretty yeah. low on a gas station donut. Yeah. The, used to be back in the days of stop and go you could get a you could get a sandy's donut but you don't see that much anymore uh sandy's does supply i think they supply all the casey's and they prefer they for sure supply the holiday station down by the interstate on the interstate oh. Eighth down here that's a hot tip people forget that they get the sandy's is yeah so you can go to that one yeah God, sandy's donuts a good that's a tasty treat yeah uh so Lenny calls to inform him about Lard Lad Donuts giving away donuts. It's, it's due to the, uh, they failed a health inspection. They f- so they can't sell these donuts. Yeah, they failed the health inspection. That's what caused this donut calamity. So Homer, you know, he's a man of his desires. So he bypasses going to the actual proper waste facility because he was told by Lenny that time is of the essence. So what's he do? He just fucking shit cans that station wagon and dumps that goddamn thing, (laughs) drives to a cement barricade, dumps it into the river, goes and gets his free donuts. Meanwhile, that was the tipping point. Lisa was right. That silo of pig shit was a tipping point. Now, what first mutates? Uh, A squirrel. A squirrel, yeah. A raccoon chases a squirrel into the lake. And it jumps back out. Now it has like 27 eyes. Yeah. Too many eyes. Too many eyes. And great big teeth. It's, yeah. So now there's a squirrel stumbling out of the lake. It's all mutated. Uh, And then it's Bart and Flanders doing a little... um, Little nature walk. Neighbor, neighbor son little walk. They're starting to kind of bond a little bit. And that's when they see this freakish animal, which the uh, Environmental Protection Agency captures... And who do we get to play a major role in this? I did not see this coming. Russ Cargill. Yeah. Russ Car- I think we've had one Russ Cargill episode. Yeah, I like sort of vaguely recognized the voice, but not the name or the character. Yeah. He did something different in the and the other one. He's not a life coach, but he's something similar to okay. that. Okay. Yep. He's in this a lot. Oh my god. The yeah. voice is pretty perfect. Yeah. Um yeah. Also, I have to point out during uh, right before this, before we go to to Russ Cargill, uh, we get a great scene when Ned and Bart are on that hike and they stand at the top of the hill and Ned goes. And from here, Bart, you can see all four states that Springfield borders, Ohio, Nevada, Maine and Kentucky, yeah. <laughs> which is so fucking funny that they took the time to sort of explain yeah. Yep. How all of this shit is so close to them yep. and explain that like where Springfield is is so nebulous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, what an interesting selection because Ohio and Kentucky. 
not that far apart. Yeah, bo- they border each other. Mm-hmm. No, nope. no. Nope. They really, they, they really want to twist the knife yeah. for, for the dorks that need to f- be completists and they figure everything out. They keep fucking with you. Yeah. 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 Which, bravo. Good for them. <laughs> so Russ Cargill is now in charge of the EPA, and he they got this 27-eyed squirrel. They know shit's going, getting buck wild in Springfield. And that's when we get Arnold's president, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It wasn't yeah. Rainier Wolfcastle, which I would have assumed. Isn't that weird? Yeah. I think that's strange that they have Rainier. It, like, it's Rainier Wolfcastle, clearly. Yeah. yeah. But he's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm. It's not Rainier Wolfcastle. I thought that was strange. So he's let him know that, hey, this is the most polluted city in America. What are we going to do? And, and Cargill's like, hey, we have five options. And then he's like, which of these do you five would you, would you prefer? And he just chooses number three. He's like, well, don't you want to read it? This nation didn't hire a reader. It elected a reader. It elected a leader. Right. Which I thought was fun. Yeah. And number f- the third of the five solutions is to enc- encase Springfield in a giant glass dome, which is so great. And so the city's like, what the fuck? What are we going to do? And everyone's like, Homer knows. He is behind all this. Yeah. And it's all, hey, you know, no one has to know until they find the fucking, they find the silo with a return address on the back of it. And that's when <laughs> we get, which was probably never going to be matched, the best Springfield mob ever. Because the, the beauty of a full, you know, we're making a movie instead of a TV show. It's just this panoramic view yeah. of a pitchfork mob coming coming for the Simpsons. And good, this was like probably the first point in the movie where I was like, well, maybe not the first, but this was the biggest point in the movie where I was like, oh, we're going to throw some budget around and yep. really make yep. this totally. look good. Yep. Maybe the, the intro had a little of that, but this is where we really see it. Like just, it's like the camera swoops through the mob so you yep. see everybody. Like it was very, very cinematic. And well, you, you, you hit pause a bunch, you see some deep cut characters yeah. in that crowd, that's for sure. Yeah, they uh, they really spent the money and, and, and really went for it in a lot of these scenes. I thought that scene of that army of, hel- that swarm of helicopters dropping the dome was a good scene. Mm-hmm. Like yep. that again, felt big yep there's a couple good gags when that happens too like sight gags what happens when something like like the guy that can't decide ends up getting crushed yeah by the do dome. i stay inside or do i leave do yeah. i what do i do and he gets crushed underneath it instead <laughs> yeah i thought that was fun so the uh the mob is going after the simpsons and ransacking their house they're gonna kill up they got they're lynching they got, they got nooses <laughs> we got swinging. nooses in the tree and we get a real a pretty involved good action scene of them trying to run they try to drive away but the car gets picked up and carried back to the to the hanging site and they end up making a dash for bart's tree house mm-hmm. what do you do you, you hook a chain to otto's bus and you pull that tree over so that's we get that giant tree going back and forth. And Maggie, she puts two and two together. She's like, let's use the sinkhole. Because we get a scene earlier where Maggie, where Marge or Homer's convinced that Maggie's on the outside of the glass. Yeah, Marge. But, but what it is, is that she's just using that sinkhole. So Maggie makes the leap, jumps out of the treehouse, lands, goes perfectly through, pops on the other side. Bart, Lisa, Marge all do the same. We get a good sight gag of Homer doing it, but he's too big. Yeah. <laughs> so he starts clawing his head. <laughs> so, well, one person grabs a rake. Which yeah, runs right. a rake across his yeah. head. I like uh, that th- it was it was one of those things, much like uh, Bart's uh, peen earlier, it was weird to see Homer flipping them off. Yeah, good point. Because he's like throwing up double birds as he's slowly sinking into yeah. the sandbox. I think we get a, a Marge saying God damn later yep. on too. And that Which was also another one that I was like, oh like, shit, Ooh, okay. Hot and spicy. Moms can curse. Yeah. <laughs> and... And the, they did a good job of, like, f- figuring out a way to not, like, well, why don't they all just use the sinkhole? It's because it sinks the whole house in. Yeah, so it just sucks in the whole house. Poltergeist style. Yep, and and clogs it up. Yep. So the Simpsons are now on the outside. I don't want to go back too far, but there's a fantastic moment when the townsfolk first storm into their home uh, to get the Simpsons out of there, and Krusty Sixteeny, the chimp on Maggie, and Maggie just calmly, like Western grips her her baby bottle and breaks it on the stairs and is gonna glass that chimp. And like, what was the goal with Maggie? Like, <laughs> what was what? What did they think maybe Maggie could cause trouble with that she needed handling? Yeah, you know, like, like oh, we got to take care of this baby first. 
first, but Maggie, straight up G, ready to uh, cut that chimp. You ever tried to break a bottle over something like they do in the movies? No, I never have. Fucking hard, man. I'll usually, bet. Usually cracks lengthwise in your hand. Oh, fuck. Very dangerous. Because I remember trying that a few times at like a bonfire party as a teenager. Try to crack a beer bottle over a tailgate. Fuck. <laughs> you gotta go to the hospital. Oh, I've <laughs> yeah. never tried to break yeah. a beer bottle, I guess. Well, you I gotta got a live a little. <laughs> You'd get in day drunk with a case of bush light bottles cracking a fuck. Oh, my hand. He's, so whoever's in 102 is bleeding out. <laughs> <laughs> Fucked up. <laughs> Another beer will help. <laughs> I, saw, I saw from the DJ booth, saw a stripper reach over and Western grip a long neck and put it upside a guy's head and watched it shatter. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. I don't know Gee. what he said to her, Knock but she out. was not having it. No, sliced him up fucking oh, good. Really, really did, a, did a Harvey Dent fucking two-face job oh, on him. Shit. Oh, yeah. He was all cut up. Really? Yeah, she yeah. didn't work there anymore. <laughs> gonna that. say like what was the repercussions yeah i guess he just 86 her yeah, yeah, yeah. she was like well i guess i don't work here anymore <laughs> uh, was she like new at the job or no been, uh, no she'd just... been in it so he whatever he said must have been real sour yeah he <laughs> he hit a nerve and i remember our general manager going into the bathroom where that guy had went because he was fucking cleaning glass out of his face and the guy being like all fucking my brother's a lawyer and i'm gonna fucking sue this place for every dime it's got and the guy had our general manager i'll give him this is just like okay listen calm down let's call your wife let her know what happened and he's like well no 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 like i don't it's it's okay and and immediately got him got all of that lawsuit talk thrown right out the door as soon as it came to well let's call your wife and get this settled yeah. down if she'd like to hear what you told that stripper uh, yeah oh. and i'm sure I would like to hear what he told her happened to his face because yeah. I bet he didn't say a stripper uh, knife to yeah, me right. at the club. Yeah, no sh oh, good call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Goddamn. Peregrine Falcon. I don't know. <laughs> what you know million? how they do. <laughs> what in a million. <laughs> <laughs> I was fighting an owl who said you looked fat the other day. Yeah, that's not on my watch. Yeah. My wife's beautiful. I came across a racist owl and I wouldn't have it. <laughs> I'm just such a good guy, honey. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, so the EPA is chasing down the family. Lisa has a nice little moment with Colin before uh, before they run away. They're doing the the hands pressed up against the glass thing, and he like plays her a little song. Of course he does. Yeah, because yeah. he's a, he's a charmer. Yeah, he sure is. Those Irish. That's yeah. how they get you. <laughs> uh, the EPA is chasing down the family. They got fucking birds in the air. They are. Yeah. <laughs> I love how. Like it's 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 the joke, obviously, but I love the seemingly endless reach of the Environmental <laughs> yeah. Protection Agency. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's very funny. Uh, they're staying at a seedy motel. Bart got into the mini bar and is shit housed. Yeah. You think that's something that they've wanted to do in the past, but couldn't due to a TV rule? Maybe. I yep. bet that yep. that falls. I bet a fucking 10 year old getting hammered would well, cross a line on yeah. television. Think how uncomfortable it would be live action. Like a <laughs> shit house 10 year old. Cause he's drunk. He's like, yeah, he's like speaking truths drunk yep. like, and blacks out on the floor for the yeah. majority of this scene. <laughs> Uh, everyone's mad at Homer. Homer, though, has he's he's got a he's got an idea. He wants to make a fresh start, start a new life in Alaska. Last frontier. I love that he's been carrying around this <laughs> photo of Alaska, this wall-sized like poster five by four, five foot by four foot <laughs> fold-out Alaska poster. Yeah, he's got a. He takes several minutes to unfold it uh, yeah. <laughs> because of how big it is. Uh, I like that he has his moment of like, no, this is the plan and it's going to be okay. And we're going to be a family. And he does the thing with Marge of like, I'm this is the Comes only it. get to ask this once in a marriage, but I need you to do this yeah. with me. And they have their moment of like, okay, we're going to yeah. go start in Alaska, I guess. And Bart pokes his drunken head up over the edge of the bed and is just like, you just bought another sack of crap from the fattest fertilizer salesman. <laughs> like, uh, Bart, uh, again, we planted those seeds earlier. Bart, not on Homer's side yeah. throughout this entire yeah, movie. He's team, he's team Ned now. Yeah, he's a Flanders now. Yeah. Uh, you saw that coming. That's a great 
plot twist for this yeah, episode. For this I like it. Movie. And I like that it keeps it keeps going. You keep seeing it flare up yep. throughout the movie. I think they did a really good writing job on that. Um so we're going to make a fresh start in Alaska. Just got to make some quick cash first. See how we get there. Uh we go to a carnival where they have the big metal ball of death with the motorcycle inside of it and the carney barker is like Ten dollars gets you three tries, and if you win, you can have my pickup. Yeah, and which is such a weird. Okay, yeah, what a weird not prize. a cash prize, yep, not yep. A, just this old beat up pickup. Okay, um, Homer blows their last ten dollars on on doing it, and he crashes and burns a couple of times, and then finally does it. Yeah, he goes through the. He makes a full loop, and they win the pickup. So they're driving to Alaska. <laughs> Family of five, yeah, in a regular cab, in a regular cab pickup. How awful that would that's be! That's tight. That's, that's got to be a, tight. I mean, two of them are young and one's a baby, but still, yeah. How are you getting across the border? Like no seatbelts. Forty <laughs> percent of the people in that vehicle aren't belted. <laughs> Can't be. <laughs> they Can't frown be on that at the port. But hey, goddamn, it's a movie. That never occurred to me. My dumbass almost just said, "Well, they don't go to a different country. They go to Alaska." Is what I almost <laughs> yeah. said just now. Uh, but yes, they would have had this to cross the border or two there. Then judgment free podcast. Thank you. So while they're doing that, it's three months in. And the townspeople of Springfield are kind of just, they're losing it. It's become kind of a hellscape because they're running out of supplies. Like earlier on, we get a gag of like, it's Kent Brockman's still doing the news. Yeah. We talked about the thing, what do they call it? Uh, there's a name that they have for, is it uh, Terrascape or something like that for the whole like idea of like they're being trapped underneath this dome. They're running out of important supplies like Botox. Uh, yeah. And any face droops. Goes, yeah. yeah. He does the old, you know, old faithful doing the clothespin behind the head before we had these fancy face surgeries and uh, botulism you can put in your goddamn face. Yep. What a f- who figured that out? I don't know who'd have figured it out, but like, honestly, fuck it. Oh, if man. it makes Everybody, you happy, have but, at it. But I'm just like, I wonder like, oh, fuck, did we just put botulism in this dude's face? Like, oh. He's looking pretty. Oh, looking spry. Yeah. I mean, like. He can only smile, but like, you know, look at me. He's happy. Wonder if he's single. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this honk. <laughs> so the they are going bonkers. There's some good visual gigs of them trying to uh, trying to escape the dome. Like all of them, very harebrained. Uh, do we get what's the name of the elephant? The elephant makes an appearance. Stampy. Stampy. Stampy tries to power through, and he's the one that first causes a crack in the in the dome yeah and they can't have that so now it's you know russ cargill sees oh boy you know the springfieldians might have figured out a way to get through this so he goes to the president and talk about solutions for this and they uh decide we're just gonna we're gonna blow it up and we'll we'll make up some excuse for what happened they, they basically have figured out a way just to remove Springfield from anyone's consciousness. You yeah. Know, it's like, it's like south of Capital City and, oh, the new Grand Canyon where we get a very good Tom Hanks appearance. Absolutely. So they make a, like they make an ad for the new Grand Canyon, which is the burnt out husk after they, after they blow the shit out of Springfield. Yeah. So yeah, I was all about that. I thought that was very good. We also in there get, uh, the rolling blackouts, like we see everybody steal all of Moe's bar when yeah, the power yeah. goes out. <laughs> and we get the town, uh, a couple of townsfolks coming begging Burns for electricity because, of course, Burns has all the yeah. electricity and he, of course, won't give any of it up. Yep. He has a nuclear plant. Mm-hmm. Like, as long as they can keep that thing cool, they will have power for a millennia. It also dawned on me, though, wouldn't that dome just be filled with smoke or steam, whatever they, comes oh, out of those cooling towers? The steam, yeah. <laughs> they, they would be cooked. They'd be like a convection oven, you yep. know? Like, they'd just be cooking inside there. Yeah, that dawned yep. on me at one point, but I was like, shut up, Marlon. Yep. Just <laughs> watch the silly cartoon. So things are really devolving, and now... Uh, uh, Marge sees an advertisement on TV for the new. Like I was like, wait a second, the new the new Grand Canyon is going to be where home is, right? And she will not stand for because they've kind of built a nice life for themselves in Alaska. So 
Homer blanches at the idea. After we get that Disney cartoon wildlife hump scene with him and Marge, oh, yeah. where like the bluebirds come I'm, I'm in and undress the him up, yeah. and everything. Because yeah, everything is so easy with Marge, but they got to work so hard with yeah. Homer. because That reindeer fabric. comes in and just rips up the back of yeah. Marge's dress with yeah. the antler. And it's such this Disney scene. like uh, like a It's like when the, the wildlife helps Snow White yeah. get dressed, except in reverse and then they they go to the bed and the camera just pans to the animals who are like all smiling in disney and then slowly get horrified yeah, realize and, what's happening yeah, yeah. God picking their it. hooves to cover their eyes yeah, yeah. Ba- the little bambi yeah. deer covers its eyes with its hoof and there's a, there's another scene r- earlier on when they're first getting to alaska <laughs> they come over a hill and it's just nothing but like oil derricks it just looks yeah. like shit it's like this is alaska like, <laughs> like and they, they pull up to the, the to the border of alaska the guy that's like checking ids or it's like here you go here's your thousand dollars and homer yeah. gives him a big kiss which is good <laughs> Yeah, and I wrote that down. The uh, the guy working that booth when Homer asks what's what's the deal with the money, he goes, "We give every resident a thousand dollars to let the oil companies ravage our natural beauty." Yeah, <laughs> he's like, "I'm finally home." You yeah, because of course Homer's all about something like that. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah. That Tom Hanks advertising the new Grand Canyon though is extremely funny. Yeah, that like was... that's a good celebrity get. Yep. Oh my God. Yeah. Tom fucking Hanks. Yeah. At that point, not a much bigger movie star. I mean, maybe his star wasn't shining quite as bright as it would have been 10 years prior, but he was still a mm-hmm. big, big name. It's still Tom Hanks. Yeah. yeah. Tom Hanks has been top 10 Hollywood name for fucking 30 years now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good for Tom. Getting it. Getting I it. like him. Go get it. Yeah, me too. That's tough to dislike Tom. So the Simpsons have built themselves a nice little life in Alaska. We get a lot of good sight gigs just in the mountains and wilderness type stuff but uh marge sees that home's in trouble and she is like we cannot stand by and homer's like fuck this we i like it up here and marge does the same thing that homer does it's like comes a time in every marriage yeah you, your partner is going to ask you to do something and you just have to blindly accept on faith that they know they have your best interest in heart and homer's like where'd you get that from like that sack of cat shit Fuck Homer Simpson. Oh, my God. He's the biggest piece of yeah. shit in this part. And the best is the hubris. He just leaves and gets drunk. Yeah, goes to the bar. Goes to Eskimos. Eskimos. Which I thought that's was funny. Is. Playing some kind of video game. Grand Theft the, Walrus. That's what, so dumb. So dumb. So it was funny. I mean, I laughed. But, and so he's like, yeah, I got about seven beers in. Time for me to go home and just... Let Marge apologize. He, yeah. He thinks, yeah. And he goes to an empty home, you know, like, because they're leaving. They're done. And he kind of chases after him, but it's it's over. And he gets trapped in the woods. He's out in the will, out in the elements, freezing. There's that, there's that moment in the cabin where she has left their wedding video Mm. where because that's the one thing she ducked back in the house to get as they were leaving and it was burning uh she's left that video and like she's it's just her sitting yeah just explaining that like nope we're done it's over i'm taking the kids and it's over yeah and like that's a fucking heavy scene voice acting by the person that does marge's voice absolutely i thought the same thing because it's like gravelly it's that like i've been crying a lot voice yeah just kills it in that scene and the critics even said the same thing too about like the reviews that like oh yeah that was some of the best words in this episode was whoever does march i should know at this point but like did 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 really good work on that and then yeah so homer that's where homer realizes the gravity of it like oh yeah. shit like when he goes after he's on foot and he gets he's out in the woods now and things are <laughs> things are bad he does he oh he it's kind of a nice visual he falls on on the edge of a lake on in a, ch- a break an a ch- ice flow yeah an ice flow and he breaks off and it's shaped like a heart and then the heart breaks in half and his half goes floating and he's out yeah. cold and he wakes up to like a polar bear which Polar bear is not the animal you want to wake up to. Polar bear will fuck you up. No, like they're adorable on the side of a Coke can, yeah. but a polar bear will murder you. Yeah, and they are. Grizzly bear, usually you got to startle them or they're dying. They're so hungry for them to mm-hmm. fuck you up. Polar bear, you get in their way, you're done. They, yeah. they have no time for people. 
And so it looks like it's curtains for Homer, but then you get the polar bear gets shooed away by some shadowy figure. Yeah. It turns out it's like kind of like this Indian medicine woman, an yeah. Inuit. Yep. Yep. Like an Inuit medicine woman yeah. is how I would describe her. Yeah. And uh, Homer is saved and drug into the, to the medicine woman's home. And we see like a bunch of different kind of like totems on the wall and stuff yeah. like that. And I'm trying to think how does she, she kind of sets Homer straight. Yeah, it gives him some some manner of drink and like does the they do that. It goes on way too oh, long. That scene of yep. like you gotta have an epiphany What's and that? we're gonna throat yep. yodel until then. Yep. And it's yep. like Homer dancing and sh- it's yeah, it's it's borderline too much. It's, it, yeah, as One far weaker, as like, like this is a little. Yeah. This is a little offensive, guys. And but. just like, it's a joke that goes on too long that doesn't really... Sometimes they, the, the Simpsons are good at that, but this is one where it doesn't really get funnier the longer it goes. Like, right. Oh, look at Homer doing silly dances. Yeah. Like, this is them really leaning on the easiness of, isn't Homer silly? Yeah. Which is part of the... A lot of people say the decline of the show is how much they lean into, isn't Homer silly? Like, mm. And we, we see it here. This was one of... I don't know if it was the only, but this was one of the only moments in this movie where I was like, okay, guys, this is fucking dumb. Yep. But she, I mean, plot wise, she sets Homer straight. Do we see how he gets back? We get like a trip out sequence of him, like in the medicine tent, like having his epiphany where like the trees pull his body apart and like, and at the end of it all, Homer's big epiphany is that other people matter. Yeah. Like what? It's like you fucking Ted Bundy. You're right. (laughs) You sociopath. You need to be, you need to get a hallucinate, like, hallucinogens in your bloodstream almost die from a polar bear attack to be re- to be reminded that hey you're not the only human being with value right <laughs> like, other people matter yeah, homer. Like, oh my god yeah <laughs> homer's a bad person right yeah. i mean homer is also like 90 percent of every red state we're, but we're, like we're lucky homer's lazy yeah <laughs> thank know? god i don't want that guy with a work ethic god knows right he's a fucking congressman if that happens you know like <laughs> oh god you know? yeah that's, that's true yeah. <laughs> oh. So Homer knows that he needs to he needs to help Springfield to help reunite his family and reunite with Marge. So he returns back to Springfield, and he learns. I don't. How do we fight? How do the rest of the family get captured? Well, they're on their way to Seattle. They're on a, a train or a bus. I think a train. And they have that scene where the NSA overhears them. There's like a robot conductor. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The robot conductor overhears Lisa talking about, but we're fugitives. We can't go back to Springfield. And uh, when they pull into Seattle, uh, they are immediately nabbed yeah. uh, by Russ and the rest of the EPA. And for some reason, they bring them back to Springfield. Like They wake up. Yeah. They just dump like them the off town back square. in Springfield. Yeah. There's a fun moment where, uh, like, we get the, we see the inside of the NSA, and it's just rows and endless rows of people listening to phone calls and everything, mm. and like they they pause on a couple of them so you can hear the conversations they're listening into, and that one woman who's on the phone with some pizza delivery place, and she's like, "I have a question about your meat lover's pizza. I like meat, but I don't know if I would say that I love it." And then it pans on to the next person. Yep. I love that. That's a phone call yeah. someone is making, and you kind of forget this is around the time we started realizing the scope of NSA's like, yeah. spying on their own citizens. Yeah, and, and how of- fucking atrocious that yep, is we've just kind of forgotten about oh that. yeah it's fine yep, whatever yep Ugh. yep <laughs> fucking blow my head off america the farewell tour <laughs> the thrilling final season <laughs> of america uh the nsa i like that uh that the guy who's listening and overhears Lisa like hops up out of his chair and is like, we got one guys. Yep. The NSA actually helped prevent something. We finally did something relevant. It's so good. Um, so yeah, the, the, they roll into their train rolls into Seattle and they're nabbed by the EPA, uh, immediately as soon as they stop in Seattle. Uh, Homer is on his way to Springfield, uh, on some sled dogs, mm. just whipping them over and over yeah. again. And they finally turn on him, which is Oh so God, good. when he takes their harnesses off and they immediately maul him and run away. It's so good. Uh, 
And then he's like, he's trudging through the snow and has lost his way. And he sees a vision of the Inuit woman in the clouds who points to where he's supposed to go. Points with her boobs. We make mm-hmm. a joke about her and her and her tits. Uh, <laughs> and but he uh, refers to her as boob lady. Boob lady. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, boob lady. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get a kick out of that. <laughs> uh, Homer gets there. He gets to, to Springfield finally. There's such a good joke where he's like on an overlook, overlooking Springfield, and he's looking down there. And they do that thing around the edges of the screen where it's black to make it look like binoculars. Mm -hmm. uh, And it's like zooming in and out and going in and looking at something else, zooming in and out. But when they cut back to Homer, he just has his (laughs) cupped hands up to his eyes pretending he has binoculars. (laughs) That was a very stupid joke that I really liked a lot. Uh Homer sees that the that his family is in is in this transport vehicle, and so he's going to get them out. He grabs a wrecking ball, yeah. then and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. swings it, and it barely touches the vehicle, and then <laughs> smashes back into him. Yeah. And then he gets fucking smashed into all this shit, including just this pendulum gag of him going back and forth between a giant rock and a bar called the Hard Place, yeah. where he's just smashing into each of them, and then you get one last one where like he finally it stops and he's just hanging neutrally in the middle and then it like out of nowhere jumps and slams him into one of them again (laughs) that's dumb fun yep Uh, that was the most laughs in this whole movie are the sight gags yeah oh Yeah. yeah for sure uh the family, uh, Bart's raising a scene. They get gassed in the back of that transport vehicle. And like you alluded to, they wake up in the town square. They yeah. just put the family back in Springfield. Yeah, with a little hole in the top. Yeah, which I suppose is all they want. They're trying to contain. They yep. just want, yeah, yeah, that you makes know, sense. so they dump them back in there. Uh, they wake up in the town square. The town is fucking demolished. Yeah. Everything's destroyed like, except the school, which yeah, Bart pristine. is bummed about yeah. that. Homer's like the, or I mean, Mo was like the leader of a like race of mutants. Yeah, Mo is like, the emperor. He's yeah. got like bandoliers on and like a safety cone on, like an orange yep. highway cone on his head. Yeah, the residents have gone feral. Mar- uh, Mo is like, ah, yeah. After things, things got a little weird around here. <laughs> which, yeah, I'll bet they would. <laughs> um, so. Uh, Cargill is enacting his plan to just blow up Springfield. Yep. Uh, they get a, they dangle a bomb from a helicopter and dip it through a hole in the top of the dome, uh, with like, I think it's 15 minutes or something like that yep. th- before it's going to explode. Uh, Homer, uh, want, needs to get into the dome to save everybody, including his family. And he, <laughs> puts rather than there's a jet there's a jet pack in the tool yeah. shed and he instead puts super glue on his hands and climbs oh, up the side of the dome so oh god <laughs> you, fucking super gluing something that ain't supposed yeah. to be super glue good doesn't done feel good not fun no even the handful of times i have messed with super glue just getting a little bit of it like onto your finger and then mm-hmm. fuck, yeah man you deal with that for weeks mm-hmm. getting super glue off yourself it's bad shit uh, so he climbs up the dome. There is a fun bit where we're we're with the Simpsons in their own backyard or what remains of it, and they're talking about you know how we're uh, this and that, and oh God, we're gonna oh Lisa wants to go see Colin, and yeah. Marge is like, no Lisa, uh, the end times are family times, yeah. <laughs> and Homer's way in the background climbing up the dome. It's fun. Uh, the townspeople have their own plan. Uh, they're going to have Cletus distract Cargill so that the rest of the, uh, or a handful of the rest of the citizens can climb up the rope and escape out of the dome. Yep. Uh, so as they're climbing up, as they're getting out of the dome, Homer is getting into oh. the dome. If their plan's working. 
Yeah, they're they're going to make it. Uh, and they Homer slides down the rope, knocks them all out of there, and knocks the bomb down to yeah, the ground. Now instead of 15 minutes, it's like four minutes. Yeah, exactly. I like how willingly Cletus was to sacrifice his own life. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm the guy for that job. You know? <laughs> I, think, like, I think Dr. Hibbert or somebody in that group is like, we where are we going to find someone stupid enough to sacrifice themselves so we can <laughs> escape? And Cletus just steps into frame just like... Like, oh. this is my moment. Like, I think I might be a service. <laughs> <laughs> At one point during that that conversation he has with Cargill, he says something along the lines of, I once lost a tic-tac-toe to a chicken, yep. which is very funny. Yep. Now Homer has f- dicked everything up. Yeah. Thinking that, you know, he... He had dreams of being the hero. That was the whole plan here. Yeah. I'm going to come in. I'm going to save the day. But he thwarted what was a good plan. Now everyone hates him. But it's almost like they're resigned to it now. It's the mm-hmm. end of the world. They've kind of accepted their mm-hmm. fates. So we have a lot of people doing end of the world shit. My favorite of which is Martin getting revenge on the bullies. Holy shit. Uh, Martin just picks up that board and just knocks the so, shit out of so great. Dolph yep. and Jimbo and Kearney. Of this is not part of the plot, but one thing I thought as I watched this, and it never really happened, so I was kind of bummed, a shocking lack of Millhouse in this whole movie. Yeah, he's only in it a couple of times. Yeah. Like We what, get him right around here. Yeah, it's to, it's a little further down towards the end after we save the day here, yeah. but yeah, it's... And once earlier. Like, yeah. he's really only in two scenes, yeah. and neither of them are like... Primo Millhouse. He accidentally swallows his inhaler when the glass dome is about to yep. come. Oh, yep. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That one, too. Yeah. So the world's about to end. Everyone's. And Bart is with Ned. Like that's, He goes to the church. Yeah. Yeah. And goes in because they're, they're all praying. The Rod and Todd and Ned are at the church. And Bart gets in because yeah, Bart has affection for, for Ned now. Yeah. And this. I don't know how Homer comes up with the idea. But, you know, we get a flashback to him saving the day and winning the truck in the, like, the motorcycle steel thing. Yeah, the motorcycle he just ball. Sees a, he just sees a bike lying amongst the wreckage on the streets. He runs into what he calls the epipha tree. Oh, yeah. He thinks it's one of the trees that slapped him prior. Yeah. But it's, it's just a tree. It, and, it, like, it kind of points to the hole mm-hmm. and then kind of points to a motorcycle. Mm-hmm. And he gives it, like, $5. Like, yeah, he stucks go. it in a get, knot. Get, yeah, get yourself something nice, I think he <laughs> yeah. says. Yep. So he gets that bike fired up. And uh, I don't know if he knows that that's where Bart is or if it's just coincidence, but he sees Bart with Ned. At the church, he pulls yeah. up. And they After kinda... he has stolen the Texas oil man's hat. I oh, like yeah. that he thinks he needs that. They have a little panache. For this, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he sees Bart with Ned, and he explains something. Like They both kind of give their sides of the story. And then like Bart's, you know what? You know, like I've, I'm just, I like a knucklehead adventure like this. I got to go with the big guy, you know? <laughs> yeah. Bart the whole time is like, no dad, I'm staying with the Flanders yeah. you know? And I think, I think what does it is Homer goes, I'll let you hold the bomb. Yeah. And, and Bart's on he knows board. Me. I think he's, yeah. He, he knows, knows me. me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also like, there's a moment in there where, uh, Quimby, or not Quimby, Wiggum has the bomb disposal robot out there to disarm oh. the bomb. And it's rooting around in there in the wires. And it's like red wire, blue wire. Uh, it's too much pressure. And it grabs, <laughs> it grabs Wiggum's service revolver and blows its own head off. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so um, Homer does just like he did in this. He's climbing up the sides of the sphere It gets real tense because Bart's falling off. He grabs a strand of hair. He grabs one of his side hairs and it comes undone like the seam in a, in a yeah, that's been sewn. Like you know? stitching. Yeah. yeah. And but by grace and by God, they he's able to Bart chucks the bomb through the hole. And during all this bike melee, we get them jumping the gorge from like season three. Yeah. And if you blink, you'll miss it. You see the old ambulance. The crashed ambulance up against the tree. From where Homer's gurdy fell out. Yeah. So good. I'm glad you caught that too. I was like, look at that. favorite things of this. Yeah. Because there's a lot of Easter eggs hiding in this, but that one might have been the best. I thought precious few like old references. And I kind of expected this to just be reference fest. I think what I'm thinking of 
it was mostly if you just hit pause a bunch during the angry mob scene. Sure. You get some deep cuts. I mean, you got to work for those deep cuts. You're, you're, the naked eye can't even catch them. Yeah. You know? like, I just, like, I'm glad that this wasn't the case, but I really was expecting this movie to just be reference, reference, reference. Mm-hmm. Like, remember this, remember that. And I'm so glad it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. You're right, though. Yeah. Yeah. And like, the, the ambulance uh, crashed into the tree when they jumped the gorge is like one of only a handful that I caught anyway. Maybe if I watched this half a dozen times, I'd catch a bunch more. And I'm kind of getting my story mixed up. The gorge is how they kind of end after they yeah. successfully drop the bomb. And they land the landing this time. Yeah. Oh, no, they don't. But uh, the uh, the slingshot catches. Bart uses the slingshot and they to propel them spring them back yep. up. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And who's waiting for them? But Cargo. Russ Cargo. With a shotgun. Yep. And... Uh, he, he's going he's gonna to shoot Homer and Bart for foiling his plans, but before he can, which, I mean, it's a little bit just like, I, doesn't make any sense because it hasn't been pointed to at any other time, fucking Maggie <laughs> brains him with a rock. Yep. Yeah. And they're like, holy shit, Maggie. And the one thing that's seen is Maggie just does a quick, like, kind of like pistol guns. Little finger them. guns, yeah. yeah. And just goes on about her way. Like, yeah. Just another day in the life for Maggie. You I know? mean, she like, shot Mr. Burns that one yeah, time. Did, like, yeah. Maggie's dangerous. She tried to glass a monkey earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Maggie's a baller. So... The the dome is gone. The Springfield's not going to blow up. Russ Cargill has been eliminated. Uh, and one of the best things, it's like, there's a scene where the, all the townspeople are together. It's like, we're all alive and no one got hurt. And then we cut, there's like one giant shard of glass the size of like a garage has <laughs> completely crushed uh, Dr. Nick. Yeah. He's just, goodbye, everybody. Yeah, that <laughs> like, was funny. Like he has had no other work in this episode yep, except it's that. the only time he's shown up in this whole I fucking movie. pretty sure that they decided that this movie is not canon it's at not, all. I, I was, yeah. I, I'd be bummed if we don't get any more Dr. Nick. I had the same thought. I was like, I wonder if he's, but there's no way. There's <laughs> no way they regard this as canon. I read somewhere that some Simpsons nerds were uh, uh, persnickety about this. So then like, there's like a dream wipe coming up at one of the later... Oh, okay. Yeah, like, okay. A, like a Men in Black style dream <laughs> wipe. Like, so that that's how they figured how to get around that. <laughs> uh, so... The town now the town say beloved Homer and Marge is there. They reconcile. Yeah, and he scoops her up on the motorbike yeah. and rides away. Probably the second most like the world. Okay, they visually this is a movie. Mm-hmm. Where, like the leaves falling. There's like some nice perspective shots. Yeah. You know, so like nice ending. Yeah, yeah. As it has throughout this movie, Hans Zimmer's score comes up. Like Hans Zimmer is a motherfucking composer yeah. he's very good at what he does and the move the music in this movie is very good so and that's and well it's not quite it did you watch through the credits i did yeah this because this wraps up with the townsfolk helping them rebuild their house yeah. and homer accidentally nails a shingle to his leg yeah. and then falls off the roof or something so it ends on on a on a real quick uh gag yeah, kind of the gag. They were just like the movie started. They're horsing around on the roof. Yeah. Yep. And we get them. We get the Simpsons in the movie theater watching the credits. Yeah. And we get fucking Maggie talking. Maggie's, Maggie says sequel. Yeah, yeah. Which is dumb. Yep. Right. Yeah. I like, though, that uh, like Lisa wants to stay just long enough to see if any animals were yeah, harmed yeah, in making this. There, and weren't. as soon as it scrolls by, she's like, oh, okay. Yeah. And they get to leave. One nice touch of it uh, during the credits towards the end, you see movie shot on location in Springfield. Uh, yeah, that was a nice touch. And then yeah. there's a comma, and then what is clearly a long name, but it has a black bar over it, and then mm. a period. So they like redacted the state. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It's barely. It's like a slightly different shade of black than the credits. God, I'm trying to think if there were any other. Uh, we credits? get the squeaky voice teen at the end oh, sweeping liked. up the theater. I yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, it's like... Because I like him, yep. so it's cool when he like, shows up. Something about being assistant manager. Assistant like manager is it all an hour. cracked yeah, up to yeah. me. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's it. That wraps it up. I will say better than I thought it would be. Likewise, I enjoyed this. Um, I... I don't think I ever like had a real out loud laugh throughout this entire thing, but I definitely enjoyed myself all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. 
Like, I will say, I think I went on record last episode of the podcast. When I watch a movie that's based off of a, 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 a sitcom or something like this, I usually think to myself at the end, oh, I would have rather watched three or four new episodes back to back. I think it, I don't think three or f- this is just as funny as the new Simpsons episodes that are coming out in this era. At this time, yeah. 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 If this movie would have came out in 1995, I was like, oh, that's horseshit. Compared, right. Compared sure. to these shows. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm thinking, like, I would put this ahead of this, the South Park movie. Which, oh, I see, don't know. I think that show was hitting so hard at that point. Like, if that makes sense, I just... It's tough to put myself back there at the time. Like, was the movie as funny as the mm-hmm. show was at the time? But, man, that movie's good. Bigger, yeah. longer, uncut is funny. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of... This is a deep... The Strangers with Candy movie was funny, but I'd rather have had three new episodes of that show. The Reno 911 movie, I'd have rather yeah, had yeah, there's three episodes mo- of 911. Insane, like, mo- like not montage, like, where they're all in a hotel, <laughs> and just cutting their windows, and they're all jerking off. Yeah. It's so ridiculous, but you're right. They'll but- always... Any, I think any movie that is based on a TV show will always do a thing where they can stretch its legs as far as what they can get. Yeah. Like, oh, we can't do this on TV, so we have to do it here. Yeah, yeah. Like, With South Park, it was all the cursing. In, endless cursing. And, and weird fucking. Yeah, yeah, weird fucking. And the... You know, the Reno one with that jerk off bit, that would have never worked. Mm. The Simpsons was showing Bart's dick or having yeah. Homer flip everybody off, like, or Marge say, God damn it, which yep. comes up uh, when they're on the motorcycle throwing the bomb out the hole. Yeah. She's like, throw the goddamn bomb. <laughs> yeah, that's that what was it funny. Is. Yeah. yeah, I like, I thought this was good. Perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah, totally. I like that they were able to stretch their legs a little more with the animation and have some yeah. bigger visuals. I like, think this looks so much different than the show. Yeah. Like, yeah. you can tell that they were, like, using a different, I don't know, animation program or yep. more. This looks like when Family Guy made the transition from traditional animation to computer animation, yeah. there was that break that you could tell. Same with South Park. You could tell when they mm-hmm. when they switch technologies that yep. like, oh, this just looks different. Yeah. Like the Simpsons uh, looked, everything looks rounder. Nothing looks flat anymore, yep. you know, yep. in, in the movie. There's perspective. There's yeah. like, the shadowing everything is so much better. Depth. Yep. The shadowing is good. I didn't find anything about it, but I didn't dig very deep. It's funny. I wonder if they gave any thought of doing a movie early in the Simpsons days. I don't know. Like they would have almost had to. Yeah. There certainly someone had written Simpsons movie on a whiteboard in 1997. Yeah. You or know? even like you know, you think, I mean, quality wise, it was the mid 90s, but like pop culture wise was almost immediately. Yeah, season, like season two well, and, and three. And, and you yeah. think about this, the the South Park movie, that's between like seasons <laughs> one and two or two and three. That came it's very early. early. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like that's, which is wild to think of, you know, like, because that show debuted late fall of 97. I remember I was, I was in high school when that came out. And then so, and they had a movie out by like fall of ninety nine. Hmm. Think of the phenomenon. Well, the Simpsons were the same thing. Yeah, they went from being a like, fuck it, we're Fox, we need something to fill the airtime, to being every fucking twelve year old is going to own a shirt of this. Every yeah. trapper keeper is going to have a picture of Bart on. Yeah, like, yeah, they hit very early, as we talked about fucking seventy eight episodes which, ago. Just to show the difference, how quick that like became came and went as being a cultural phenomenon when you were 12 years old were there many bart simpson sweatshirts no, or trapper not. keepers yeah no. like if you look at like my fifth grade class picture it's the boys is 40 percent simpsons outerwear. Yeah. when i was 12 it would have been 1997 and no one no yep. one i knew talked about the simpsons Funny. granted we still didn't have Fox at the time, yeah, I don't but, but think. But neither did we. But people had yeah. satellites. Yeah. So, like, yeah. for sure people were watching it. Yeah. But I don't I don't know. Yeah. It also dawned on me, isn't there a Stephen King television show that came along Under after the Dome. this called Under the Dome yeah. that is basically this? Yeah. I mean, they, they're pretty close in time, at least the book. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. It never dawned on me that it was a book. It probably yeah. should have. Yeah. <laughs> the book might even predate this. I'm not sure. It's close either way. Never read the book or seen them. It wasn't a movie, though. It was a TV show, it was a TV right? TV show, like a yeah. CBS TV show, yep. yeah. Yep. Never did watch that. But yeah. I remember even at the time going, isn't that the plot of the Simpson movie? Catching up on Stephen King is like catching up on 20 years of South Park. It's like, yeah. He puts out a book every fucking six months, man. Like, I. I've read a lot of Stephen King. There is so much I haven't read. Same here. I have read a shitload of Stephen King, yeah. and I haven't scratched the surface. I bet I've read less than 10% of his total output. Oh, really? And I've oh. read a shitload. I think I'm a little better than them. Fuck. Maybe not. Because he keep, you know, I probably think that because I'm thinking, what did he stop writing? Like, in my head, it's 2005. You know? Right. Like, yeah, so like, you're fuck. 20 years behind. Yeah. Like, like, what's the last Stephen King book you read? Like, uh, the most recent yep. one would have been probably the fifth book in the Dark Tower series. Oh, wow. Uh, I read From a Buick 8. That is the first book of his I remember being on the new release rack when I was getting into Stephen King. Uh, That's probably late 90s, early aughts from Buick 8. Is it really that fucking? I bet it's that fucking old. Well, no, then I'm wrong. I've read some of his like mid-aughts short story collection then. Uh, okay. Everything's eventual. Even that's fucking getting close to 20 years old by now, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah. Time keeps on ticking, ticking. Look for our new podcast where we read and recap Stephen oh, King novels. My head would hurt so bad, bro. I am ready to start that today. Yeah, fucking. What are we gonna? What are, are there? There's plenty of deep cuts. I still need to read. Same here. I've never read Firestarter. I've never read Cujo. I've never read Carrie. Bro, I can send you home with Cujo. Cujo, so I think fucking I own, good. I think I own Cujo. Oh, get with the time. Yeah. I read own it. it. I've never read it. Oh, read it. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah. I've read I've read every short story up or every short story novella collection up to Everything's Eventual. But there's there's been like one novella collection and two short story collections since then. I've read zero novella or short stories. Oh, of that's Stephen his best King. thing. He's, that's what I keep hearing. His, but I don't know where to. I got to do the research of like pick them up at by release date. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay. You start with Graveyard Shift or Night Shift or whatever it's called. Then you do different seasons. Then you do, oh man, Nightmares and Dreamscapes is around there somewhere. Or Skeleton Crew come. Jesus, this is getting fucking boring. You're giving boring. it away. Save it for our new podcast. Right? Yo, yeah. This is, this is yeah. hot content. Marlon and Nathan's <laughs> Stephen King Maker. Oh, man. What we have to do is have to make like a like a remake of those late 80s, early 90s TV commercials that they would try to sell you fancy hardcover versions of the Stephen King yep. novels. It's like, welcome to the mysterious world of Stephen King. <laughs> <laughs> Like a Time Life music yeah, right. collection. Yep. It's, a, it's just us laying on a floor reading <laughs> beat up paper past the Stephen King. These, I'll, man, I'll lay on a floor. Don't the, tempt me. These two men <laughs> attempt the impossible. <laughs> I would like to do a thing. I don't know. Like, this is definitely a conversation for off air, but here we are. Uh, I would like to do a thing uh, where we... And and to be fair, I'm kind of cribbing this idea from Kyle Kinane. Over the pandemic, Kyle Kinane did a show called Public Domain with Kyle Kinane on <laughs> YouTube where he just read Dracula. He just picked a book that was in the public domain oh, and really? just read it out loud huh. in his garage. And I think that would be a fun shtick. There we go. There's so much out there. Maybe you and I think you and I should release a commentary track for the Simpson movie. Mm. Something that people can hit play on and then watch the movie but listen to us God, we're, we're so engaging we have all of these great ideas so Nathan. many ideas we're ideas men and we're not putting them to use no, because we're, we're just, ideas men just hanging out <laughs> getting fatter drinking cocktails <laughs> just drinking cocktails just slouching the posture's not getting better yeah instead of drinking garbage beers we drank cocktails yeah so you, you oh you definitely heard the ice clinking with mine as i struggle to tongue the cherries out of this fucking, watching you try yeah. to get a cherry out of erotic? rocks glass is yes Thank extremely you. erotic that's what i was hoping that's what i go for like what did you think i just had an enormous visible erection yep. this whole time because i, I like this movie a i like the movie that you like okay. the movie yeah. i did like, I like the movie but not, i like the shape of the dome 
That did a lot for you. No, I like watching you try to yeah, tongue this, fish yeah. a cherry Man. out of your glass. Again, this is content. We should be filming this. We put it on OnlyFans. There's some subsect of Asian businessmen. me. I have a GoPro. Oh, I'll set up God. a GoPro yeah, and me? we can film this. Fucking tongue box and this goddamn short fucking... <laughs> Glass, just getting the fighting for cherries. That's an already an erotic fruit. Mm -hmm. Fighting um, for cherries is for sure the yeah. title of a pornography uh, already. Uh, yeah, uh, just, just you know, isolate that audio, but put that in a loop. There are guys jerking off on a subway in Seoul, Korea, just fucking risking it all. They don't give a shit. They probably fucking cane you for that shit. But they oh, can't that's for resist. sure my new ringtone. Yeah. Is you just going. <laughs> no, you're you're putting up impressive work over there. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. we got two cherries left. We got the two end I'm bosses here. Watching you here. fight with them, it's been fun. Nathan's been drinking uh, rye uh, bullet rye old fashions all yep. night, and I've been uh, putting down some El Tesoro margaritas. We thought we like we usually drink cheap beer during this yeah. show, but we were like, you know what? It's the New Year's Eve episode. Let's class it up a little. Yep. Let's have some cocktails. New Year's Eve, yeah, right. We're we should have dressed up. I mean, we kind of have collars on. <laughs> we both technically have shirts with collars on. Yeah, I'm wearing pants like a big boy. I'm wearing Athletic Adidas wear. basketball yeah. shorts and a sleeveless button-down flannel shirt. I'm also wearing a Schlitz T-shirt because my dress shirt's unbuttoned. That at least two quarts of rye have been spilt on this shirt. <laughs> the shirt's a fish. I think the viewer listeners deserve me getting one of these cherries out before we end this. Come on. Come on. You got to want it, Nathan. There you go. Oh, you're really throwing the neck mm. back like a pelican. Oh, God, that one was so close. <laughs> mm. hey, hey, we did it. Cherry time. <laughs> Delicious treats. <laughs> Those are good cherries. Mm -hmm. That's not some fucking bullshit maraschino grocery store cherry. That's an expensive cherry. Cherries, if son. all drinks came with cherries this good, I'd be a crippling alcoholic. <laughs> you going for that last one? Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Mm. Daddy took too much in his mouth. <laughs> oh, you got the cherry, but at what cost? You right. got both <laughs> my, ice cubes, My too. dignity. <laughs> oh, your hubris. Mm. I need a floss more. That hurt my teeth. <laughs> mm, gums is tender. Uh, so... That was fun. I enjoyed doing the Simpsons movie. Like we talked even, I think even back when we first started this show, we were like, where are we going to shoehorn it? Once it comes time, we should do the movie, you know, when it comes in, you know, and then we did the math and yeah. found out it comes between 18 and 19. And I wish the math would have worked out that we would have ended 18 uh, and yep. then done the movie. And the, like we've dipped our toe into 19 yep. already. Uh, but I think this works totally fine. I think our listeners will forgive us. Yeah. Yep. So I hope you've enjoyed our talk of the Simpsons movie. It was fun. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Went well, I was kind of like, I think I discussed off air how are we going to do it? Because usually we do that. I handle an episode, you handle an episode. Yeah. I ha But it worked out. Yeah, we. I, I told you, I was like, you know what? We're professionals. We can keep the ball in the air between the two of us. We'll just do it on the fly. And I think we did all right. Not to tug our own dicks here, but I think we did all right. Tell us we did all right. Email us, listeners, please. Yeah, you can email us at barleybasketusa at gmail.com or uh, hit us up on the internets, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at barleybasketusa and tell us we did all right. Tell us we're good. We need it. We could. I could use it. I Always need it so bad. Oh, I could use baby, any validation. Baby needs that validation. Yeah, I just need... Just, just, some days it's like, what am I even getting out of bed just for? Just give me the validation. Just, anything, anything. Hey, it. man, glad you're not sleeping forever that's all it takes <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's all it takes is to receive that text message yep, at 10 a.m yep, yeah oh, man, turn 10. my whole week around right oh my god yeah <laughs> just i guess i am getting out of bed today guess i'm just not gonna lay in here and eat an uncooked pop tart in bed why is it even in here why are the pop tarts beside the bed that's where the mistake is made when you put toaster treats beside the bed yeah yep. why is the pop tart oh, next to the bed is it a, Nathan, is it less or more sad if you have a toaster in bed with you more if, uh, yeah you're right because yeah. if you're eating i mean you're eating it the way the lord intended but god damn it, you got a toaster in bed that's trouble are you are you a pop tart toaster do you toast every pop tart no if, i have so if, rarely ever ate pop tarts in my home pop tarts were a i'm at a truck stop and i can't eat any more jerky or i'm like 
it's you're at work and it's one of the three options left in the wheel of doom and it's like oh, sure. fuck, I, I ain't gonna eat fucking pickled eggs <laughs> out of op- a vending open machine. air pickled eggs from a vending machine <laughs> guess it's pop tart time yeah i don't know we so rarely ever had them in my house and i, I never purchase a box of pop tarts because i'm gonna purchase a, a toaster treat gonna be toaster strudels all day, every day. Really? Yep. I'd way rather have a Pop-Tart. Interesting. Yeah. You get to put the fucking cream cheese frosting. Who's got me- the time? Bro. Who's got that, the time? Because that's the thing. Like, I don't, like, they Pop-Tarts were never like a grab-and-go meal for me. Like, Sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know what will put me kind of in your camp is saying this, that above both of those, I'll take a toaster scramble, which is a, a toaster strudel but full oh, of like scrambled eggs, egg, cheese, cheese and taters, bacon. Maybe? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Like, and, and no, <laughs> there's no cream cheese drizzle on that because that'd be disgusting. But I would take that over both of those. Yeah. I've never had. Oh, that they're sounds delicious. Good. Sounds yeah. good. Yep. I like a breakfast hot pocket. I like most frozen breakfast treats, actually. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> when it comes to Pop Tarts, I have a strict rule. In the toaster is for dessert pop tarts, cookie dough, <laughs> s'mores, brown sugar, cinnamon. Eat them cold out of the bag is for the fruit pop tarts, your oh, cherry, your blueberry. That's how I roll. I could count on one hand how many times I've ever ate a non fruit flavored pop tart. Sure. I didn't even know they existed until I worked in a grocery store. Like, oh, man. S'mores, like, brownie, look, yeah. birthday cake. Like, those are the best ones. Yeah. No, like, see, the non-fruit ones. We were, like, the, ever, anytime I was ever at someone's house, it was like blueberry, cherry. That's what I sure. remember. I like a cherry. I like yeah. a blueberry. Uh, happy New Year, buddy. We did it. We look did it. We made it. Christ on sale. We made it through 2021. Through just we're wearing our 2022 baby New Year sashes, mm-hmm. singing "Old Lang Syne" yeah, like top, we do. Top hats. We're just we're diapers. I mean, the diapers aren't new, but that's <laughs> it. Actually, fits for once. <laughs> <laughs> it fit, we're in character finally it's finally not full yeah right yeah our, our podcast diapers are clean as whistles i'm gonna say it uh, randy travis's old lang syne is the definitive version yep. it's the only one you need yeah it's randy travis didn't fuck a whole lot of things up i mean besides his face that's not his well i mean he, he didn't do that i mean the lord did uh, well sure yeah i mean he's a little frankenstein yeah was that a stroke or is he you know, oh, I have no idea. Oh, yeah, no, no, Randy, little, Tra- Randy Travis is blasted, bro. I just thought he, he was a little ugly. No, no, no. Randy Travis had some cat in his day. Huh. I mean, not classically handsome. Not Billy Ray Cyrus handsome, but like, oh, no, he's <laughs> fucked up now. <laughs> That's your go-to example is uh, Billy Ray Cyrus? You fucking ask any of your aunts in 1992 who they were flicking the bean to. <laughs> Pretty good chance it was fucking. They had the fucking Are Cyrus you? virus fucking course and <laughs> course into their abdomens. <laughs> I'm not going to ask any of my aunts <laughs> oh, that. It's the holidays, bro. You're going to have the chance. Hey, I don't need hey, to. Aunt Tootie, <laughs> you know back when you're fucking like Uncle Ricky. Oh God, <laughs> what are you thinking of? Holy shit, just casually dropping that. Holy if shit, she could have an answer ready, like locked and just loaded. Just like, oh hell yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we did it. We made it. Uh, we will come back strong next year. Yeah, next year, twenty twenty, in the future. Imagine it, if you will. What could the future hold? Jetpacks? I hope so, man. Flying we're cars? We're due, man. Yeah. Uh, literally just common just human decency. Let us go to the dentist. Can we ever go to the can dentist? Can we go to the dentist? My teeth hurt so bad. Can we just, can poor people go to the doctor? Just let them have them go That's to the dentist. That's what I would like yep. next year. If we could, that'd be cool. Let's set it all on fire. Or if not, we'll just watch The Simpsons and belly ache some more. Yeah. When we'll start by watching episodes two through six. Season 19. Of season 19 of the simpsons the last year of the teens yeah we're getting there come enjoy it with us together yeah two through six of season 19 we'll pick up where we left off we hope you enjoyed our uh cocktail infused new year's eve special of the (laughs) simpsons movie goodbye everybody